come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. And uh, we hope that you'll give us a like or a thumbs up, a star rating, or subscribe. That would be awesome uh, if you like what we do here. Um, you like can one also star. One star is fine. I'll take well, we, we don't, don't encourage five. Five. I just stars, I, but... I want more, but I'll take like any. <laughs> Is, is no, no, no news? Sean wants good feedback news? of any like, kind. Uh, yeah, something. Yes. Talk to us. <laughs> like, is one star worse than no star? Yes. It brings us well, our average yeah, down. Yeah, it brings yeah. the average down. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah. So don't listen to Sean, ladies <laughs> no, and gentlemen. Don't listen to me. Yeah. Uh, we also, you know, I mean, hey, if you uh, want to get a hold of us, and we appreciate it if you do, join the Freak Show family. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And you can write to us the old fashioned way. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. That's email. And, <laughs> Is that the old fashioned way now? Yeah, no, yeah. Snail mail or email. And uh, you can follow Should us on Should we get Instagram. a P.O. box? Fuck it. I want a P.O. box. <laughs> I said we can cut off all other forms of communication. If you want to talk to us on a letter or a postcard or something. That'd you want you to really to bring fun. in a mail bag. That's what I want. Yeah. I want to dump all it right. out here and grab the two mails that we get. That would be fantastic. Because they're, you know, they're mails. The little separate ones are mails. Yep. Not letters. But also <laughs> Instagram, Saturday Night Freak Show. So uh, these are the internet radio superstars you'll be hearing from. Michaela. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean! What did we watch tonight? Oh. Uh, we watched 1998's Urban Legend. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. I know we teased you with it before, and I changed mm -hmm. my mind. But we finally got to it. Urban legend. Good things come to all who wait. A movie so good, they gave it two taglines. What's the Ooh. two taglines? <laughs> Tagline one. Uh, the one on the bottom, which I don't like as much, is like, what you don't believe can kill you. That's not bad. Uh, eh. Okay. You could give it to like some fantasy something or other. Right. That could apply to many movies. That yeah. could apply, especially like nowadays. Yeah. That could yeah. apply to anything. But I, uh, the other one is, it happened to someone who knows someone you know. I like that's that. Good. That's good. That's I like that one. Yeah, that's more <laughs> that that's, I like. That's the one yeah. I've always known, and that's the tagline I really yeah. like. Okay, so this is uh, who made this movie? A uh, man named Jamie Blanks. Uh, Written he, by Sil Zu Silvo Vato? Sil uh, Silvio Horta. Well, Jamie Blanks was somebody, yeah? Like, I know he had done a short film. Yeah. That one was pretty cool. Have you seen that? It's no, like the girl getting, she's like a babysitter or something. She's getting a phone call. Well, this sounds awfully familiar thus far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Gee, I think it was no the first thing he did, and then he got this job. It's pretty good, but I don't know what the hell it was called. And then he did Valentine. Okay, so he was the... Okay, all right, all right. So Yeah, yeah this is a man who directed Valentine. <laughs> so in the... Uh, so half of his works are... Well, we'll save that. Well, but. wait, did anybody here like Valentine? I haven't no. seen it. I've never seen it. Oh, don't. Okay. So we're Not to be confused with my bloody Valentine. Correct. No. Just Valentine. No. This yeah. is Valentine, the other like CW cast yeah. starring plus David Boreanaz. David Boreanaz, Jessica uh, Capshaw, Denise Richards. Oh, wow. Catherine Heigl's in that movie. Ugh. Ugh. There's a couple other ones, too. I don't like too. the way this is going. Yeah. <laughs> But this is also like the uh, 90s slasher run. So this is, I yes. guess, what we're talking about, yes. Urban Legend. Yep. So this movie comes at us in the... Uh, like the post Scream era, right? Yes. Yeah, Scream was 96. Uh, mm -hmm. 96. Scream 2 was 98. So that, that came out before this one. Mm -hmm. um, but the 90s were a time of. I mean, it was a time of. Uh, a, a big time for horror movies in the 90s. Not necessarily what? a good time. Uh, not necessarily <laughs> a good time. It's generally regarded, I think, as the shittiest decade. Right, for but I'm but there was still about, horror like, there. Yeah. There was yeah. still horror there. What? Plus, there felt like there was a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, and a lot and a lot of uh, let's grab all the teen stars we can and make horror movies with them. This is all because yeah. of Scream, yes. right? Yes, Scream yes. rated uh, like uh, Fox. What was it? Party uh, Five, Party Five mm -hmm. and the CW Network, and Friends. Formerly, which uh, at that WB. point in time was the WB. WB. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's WB. Right. Now it is the CW. <laughs> yes. yep. Back then they still had the dancing frog, and it was mm -hmm. great. And it was also the era that gave us the gigantic head uh, posters, where you'd have oh, like yeah. all mm -hmm. the Main cast, oh yeah! Like, you have to show the stars you got. Yeah, right. they're like, right. oh, they're in that. I love that show. I'm gonna go see that movie. Mm -hmm. And there's uh -huh. a creek in the background. You love it. <laughs> yep, great. Yeah, <laughs> a, yeah. In the background? a creek. Yeah. A creek. Yep, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Floating heads and behind them is the creek. Yeah, yep. it's Dawson's Creek. Yep. because oh, uh, that is the Dawson's. that yeah. is the through line for every '90s teen horror movie. Dawson's Creek. You can play Six Degrees of Separation with most movies in the '90s in Dawson's Creek. Oh yeah, it's it's WB filled mm-hmm. to the max. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah, I don't, it's so Scream was basically saying, um, you know, hey, remember there used to be these slasher movies back in the '80s, and uh, we want to kind of bring that like now it's the self aware slasher movie. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. There was a lot of a lot of like self aware slasher movies. Mm-hmm. I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Urban Legend, yeah. Valentine. Oh, I, I still obviously. know what you did last well, yeah. summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Halloween H two O. I'll always yeah. know what you did last time. <laughs> no, that was first of all, that was like 2009. Yeah, that was way later. And that and was then, a then, yeah. horrible yeah. movie, yeah. direct to video. Yeah. And then you even go further into like not necessarily horror, but more thriller, like the faculty and like oh, yeah, the faculty. faculty. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. The yeah. faculty and Urban yeah. Legend, that was like my double feature mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. It's like just those two on mm-hmm. repeat all yeah. the time. Yeah. Wild Things. Wild Things. Uh, wild uh, things. Was it The Skulls? Was the that skull? one? Yeah. yeah. That was Paul Walker. Yeah. 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 Joshua, Joshua Jackson, Jackson, yeah. Jackson, Jackson movies. He was on Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Jackson. Yes. <laughs> so there's, so how, what, how would you describe like the 90s slasher movie? Now that we're looking at it, you know, somewhat removed. I mean, what were they doing that, uh, that the 80s movie – how do they compare to the 80s slasher movies? I mean, they're definitely – Slicker looking. Um, they have budgets this time. They right? do have mm-hmm. budgets. Yeah, they're giving money for these things. Um, how to describe and star these power? Guys. I suppose. I mean, like the That's eighties the launch thing. careers where these guys were like already doing some, you know, famous for some TV shows. Right. It's it's that yeah. stuff from you know the TV shows into movies. You saw a lot of that. But they're definitely they're, they're slicker looking. The, uh, the soundtrack. Uh, the sound. I mean, the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. <That's> a, <laughs> the soundtrack's That's a character big, in itself in yeah. most of these movies. For 90s yeah. Movies like you may. I'm sure you noticed it at the time, but like looking back at it now, like you really noticed the soundtrack. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. There will be a frat party, and there will be songs by bands you are like, oh fuck, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. There will always be a frat party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just always. Like, All right, you've gone through some shit in this movie. Mm-hmm. You should relax for a night. Come to the party. Mm-hmm. There's always a party right around the corner. Always. And mm-hmm. all of them. What was the... Okay, so of these movies, what was the soundtrack album of that era that you had, had of, you know, from one of these? What was the one that... Because I know I had the Scream soundtrack. I had the Scream soundtrack, I had yeah. I Know What You Did Last Summer because that had... Uh, Makula Shaker and Hush, uh, and Hush, Hush and, on it. Yep, that was good. That's a good cover. Yeah, that was a pretty good album. Yeah, and this one, yeah, I don't know. Like I recognize the Cherry songs on and this. in it. So yeah, I mean, they I guess that's like really a, all you need. Th- Zoot Suit Riot. They had the, yep. Throw back a bottle of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I know they, there was like some Rob Zombie in this one too. There was some. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It wasn't there was the Dawson's Creek theme song. There was the Dawson's yeah, Creek theme song. <laughs> for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But just like there was so, it was so varied in the 90s though. There wasn't like, yeah. and it changed so much over the 90s. You're talking about the music now? Yeah, I'm talking movies? about the music. Like, cause you can't like pin down, I don't think specifically, cause you know, there was it's emo, there was like, there's pop. Uh, it kind of ran the gamut as far as 90s music went. And so you can't really yeah. pin down like, one, at the t- at the time like it ten nineties bands at the mm-hmm. time it didn't seem that way but now looking back like we categorize it we're like it's nineties music mm-hmm. like it's grunge Very it's pop it's all things that, yeah. back then you know it was subcategorized but now it's it's just like this accumulative mm-hmm. like entity mm-hmm. alt I mean, yeah the, the current age now it's like movies have like music as like a wallpaper score I mean I'm thinking stuff like Suicide Squad or like sure. the Transformers oh, yeah. or whatever but they're all using uh, music from a bunch of different eras and. You know, mashups and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. kind of like the, what we're doing now. That'll be the thing 10 years from now. I'll be like, oh, yeah. Which I mean, it's done done right can be awesome. Look at Baby Driver. You know, yeah. the whole thing is choreographed around the soundtrack and mm-hmm. it's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, for 90s, it was like it all came from the 90s. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah. They were pulling from the generation. <laughs> oh, never. The 90s was just like, oh, man, no, it's all about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh huh. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll give this one credit. It was better than the American Psycho 2 soundtrack. This Very is true. much so. Which you see. There are some I mean, parallels between yeah, that movie and this that's one. Like, though. That's trying to do this without the budget to actually get the real bands, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, can, how can you not afford the cherry pop and daddies? That's <laughs> they all were I'm saying. Big like, deal they the were. Yeah. Oh, they were a big deal big for that deal. one song, maybe two. Mm-hmm. But the I think one hit wonders. I think mm-hmm. that's what 
the 90s were, I think, maybe more insular than most other decades. Like, it was just in itself. Because they're self-referential, you're saying? I or think so, kinda... or it just like they, they weren't... They just didn't look outside their current time. No, they, that it, was all yeah. like self... No, the 90s were very self-centered. Mm-hmm. Like, it's Extremely, all about, like, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what it all felt like. And I think that's what makes, like, looking back on it, what makes, like, things from that time period so distinguishable from other time periods is that because they, they it all existed within this small time capsule, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I kind of wonder, you know... 20, 30 years from now, will we be able to tell the difference between the early aughts and like the tens, you know, and the twenties? Right. Like, you know, will will there be that much of a difference as there was with like the seventies, eighties, and nineties? You know, like very there's true. huge differences just in those three decades. Yeah, you know? very true. The nineties, I think, were the last distinctive decade. Yeah, I think so where too. You can, like, really identify something that came from that era. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do that. Like you said, with the you know the two thousands and two thousand tens. I mean, how often do you hear a song and you're like, oh, that came out like five years ago. And you look up and it was actually like 15 years ago. Yeah. Like that seems is to be, happen is, a lot. But is it because we're too close to it? I think it so. could be. I mean, it you get that possible. little bleed, yeah. right? The bleed yeah. over mm-hmm. from decade to decade that yeah. you have to be like 10 years removed on from it. Mm-hmm. But I suppose, you know, we should be looking at stuff like, I don't know what, American Psycho. The first one was like 2000. Well, that's like 2000, 17 yeah. years ago, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the. A lot of it is about, you know, technology and fashions, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that kind of like, you know, I've seen a lot of filmmakers now trying to downplay, like, you know, a lot of uh, uh, cutting edge technology or, you know, radically hip modern fashion. I think just so their movies will last. A right. Just so they'll age better. Yeah. 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 Era, mm-hmm. yeah. It is distracting. Like when you see like an outfit that is like you would never see anyone wear now because it's so mm-hmm. from that right, time yeah, period yeah, it yeah. is very distracting or like how but, this entire movie I wanted to punch the main character because her makeup was all brown yeah she was brown <laughs> movie. Toe, this whole movie <laughs> so much brown makeup mm-hmm. what was the uh, what was the costume what was the the wardrobe of the 90s or at least <sighs> so specific there's a lot of, of things yeah. there was like there was leather jackets <laughs> mm-hmm. over like hoodies and shirts and everything mm-hmm. leather pants mm-hmm. leather pants that was a thing midriff oh, just shirts. kind of like mm-hmm. Yeah, midriff, midriff shirts. shirts, and for the guys, like dress shirts that were overly baggy, mm-hmm. that oversized dress shirts, oversized yeah. multiple shirts. layers. Yeah, like, you yeah. Have one untucked or yeah. you know, like unbuttoned over the top mm-hmm. of yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was just messy look. And there was like a specific kind of button-up shirt. It was like kind of bowling shirt kind of tiki looking yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean yeah. which was very like specific. Dawson's Creek the whole closet for the guys on the show was nothing but bowling shirts That's like true. bowling yeah. shirts wall to wall Dawson's oh, Creek <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the nostalgia trip yeah. on the Saturday Night oh, Freak yeah. show tonight mm-hmm. so I mean but the, as far as like slasher movies went it's like you know slasher movies I guess you know, when they were saying that they basically were born in the 80s right and when we look at some of the earlier ones and some that some that we've even watched on this show, you know, My Bloody Valentine, mm-hmm. it has a uh, who done it aspect to mm-hmm. it, right? Where and maybe Friday the Thirteenth doesn't really feel that same way. No, it's like nah. who's killing him, and then it's like surprise, it's Mrs. Voorhees at the end, and then we know that it's Jason, or we know that it's Freddy, we know it's Michael Myers. Yeah, but some of the off the beaten path ones, like the Prowler, or uh, New Year's Evil and stuff like that. It is well, actually, you know who does it in that one too. But they try to do this, uh, this uh, uh, who you know, which one of the cast members is the person who's the killer? Yeah. And it seemed like all the '90s movies, that's what they were resurrecting yeah. because mm-hmm. they did that in Scream. Scream yeah. yeah. Scream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the, the costumed killer, and mm-hmm. obviously yeah. it's part of the cast, and you got to figure out who it is or mm-hmm. who's got the motivation to do it. It's that's like a they. Big element it's like the they got really movies. excited, like all bets are off. You know, mm-hmm. like I mean, that was in like, at least <laughs> yeah. like. 50 trailers in the 90s like yeah. all bets are off yeah. <laughs> guaranteed I think for Scream 3 that, that's in the that's uh, is that the tagline is that the fucking tagline uh, but in the finale all bets are off I think is what uh, that was one of the commercials for it it's like Did, uh, part 1 sets the rules part 2 breaks the rules but in part but in the finale forget the rules and all bets are and uh, what's his name Patrick Dempsey who's in Scream 3 says all bets are off in the trailer and in the I was gonna guess it was a Scott Foley line Ah, no, oh, okay. That in like every '90s teen slasher, like I feel like the, all the trailers were someone explaining what the rules are. Oh, yeah. you know, it's very, it's like Scream the, the too setup. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's that was, what you got to do because mm-hmm. they're trying to they're trying to emulate Scream, but kind of like give it their own twist. I mean, even this movie, it's basically Scream with urban legends instead of horror movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's yeah, what they're going yeah, for in this yeah. because everyone's kind of hip to the urban legends in this one. Everybody's aware of those. Right. Yeah. Like it becomes a, like uh, uh, an ironic thing. We yeah. all know what this is. And yeah. 
But the thing that didn't carry over, which I guess was the 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 in the zeitgeist of the '90s, right? It's like it's a more responsible horror movie. Like mm-hmm. there's is there a whole lot of like I mean the things that you know the '80s ones made uh, famous was the graphic uh, gore, you mm-hmm. know, and made effects men like Tom Savini, uh, sex, nudity. And lots of drug use. Was mm-hmm. there a lot of drug use in the 80s ones? Maybe. It was casual, recreational kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. At least somebody... It seemed a little harmless in there. Is that present, really, in those three things in the 90s versions? I don't... The exploit, the exploitative... Smoking I... weed was a, was big for the 90s. But other than that, I don't think drug use I feel use like was... the, the, like, the gore factor is significantly less in the 90s movies. Like, yeah. just thinking about the Friday... The... Significantly yeah. 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 yeah, because just thinking about like the Friday the 13th movies alone are way more violent than mm-hmm. most 90s teen yeah. slasher movies. Like, the 90s ones will have like one big gore moment, but then never hit on that again, you yeah. know? And everything was kind of like... Scream was... I think the goriest out of that series. It was definitely and bloody. It mm-hmm. was definitely bloody. Yeah, bloody, yeah. bloody. Very bloody. But maybe mm-hmm. not like, oh, you know, gaping wounds. No. Or, you know, those, those. Aside from the guts falling out the, of the uh, Like yeah. the, yeah. Open, the, the opening one? kill. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, God. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That is like a brutal that's, kind that's of That's really brutal. That scarred yeah. me for life as a kid, for great. sure. Yeah. That was like the first, like, really gory thing I remember watching. I was like, holy shit. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that was maybe the only one done by someone who had directed a a slasher movie in the 80s, Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. That's not true because Steve Steve Miner Miner did H2O. Yeah, and he did Halloween, or sorry, he did Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. Yeah. And Rick Rosenthal, I think, did did uh, part two and then Resurrection. Halloween Resurrection. Resurrection What year was that? Uh, is that 2000? 2000? 2000. So maybe that's at the end of the, the 90s. I think so. What yeah, was, the onset of technology. What was happening culturally that could have affected the downplay of gore in horror movies? Mm. I don't know. How are we doing? Columbine? Uh, how are we doing economically <laughs> and uh, how was our uh, I just remember it doing? seemed like there was a massive pushback toward the end of the 80s about, you know, like graphic gore in movies so much so that so many of them were edited like the MPAA. Thanks, Tipper Gore. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. the stickers on all your uh, mm-hmm. music that you'd buy and yeah. the, these things are corrupting our kids and all that. So I think, you know, somewhere in the 90s, it's like we. That's a big reaction, a big flip to that. Mm-hmm. But also, I think, you know, like things were generally more positive. It felt like the Cold War was over and, you know, there was an air of optimism. The uh, the bubble hadn't burst yet mm-hmm. on the tech bubble. So everything was like, you know, there's no more enemies. The world's at peace, <laughs> you know. So maybe yeah. that's like, well, we just don't need to be reminded, you know, to see this kind of graphic stuff in our – maybe that is like I guess a, so. A, a, I mean, you did have on like a national scale, you had like the Oklahoma City bom- bombing at some point in here, right? It was like 96 probably, right? If that came out the same year as Scream, that's probably not great for horror movies, you know. Yeah. Um, and then you have Columbine like two years later. So. Yeah, but Columbine was ninety nine. All the, uh, right. the major movies were out before that. I would yeah. Say so. yeah, yeah. And then they ended up blaming music a lot on that. Yeah, that's true. Was, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Marilyn Manson was a corrupting mm-hmm. influence. Yeah. Could, could it have been just the fact that they were using these like CW Fox I think actors? That's a big mm-hmm. part of it as well because they're already like you're using actors that are more established than I guess the actors you may have brought in in the seventies and eighties who are like. They're trying to make a name for themselves, and so they're willing to do things in movies that I don't think stars of the 90s were willing to mm-hmm. do. Because they're involved more, in that stuff. In the 90s, it seems like they're more conscious of like their career path. Yes. And, you know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be right. associated with the gutter uh, genre of horror. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Scream made it cool again. And then everybody's like, oh, the studios are like, we want more Screams. Yeah. And so, boom, we even got, we can crank yeah. out all of these things that are kind of like it. But, yeah, it's just, it is kind of surprising to me that the thing that you remember slasher movies for is the creative murder sequences, yeah. you know, the the um, the makeup effects illusions. And the 90s ones, like, basically, I mean, like, I watched this thing tonight, and I can't remember, like, a, a standout, you know, murder sequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds terrible when you're saying, like, well, sure. watch it for that. But, I mean, but it's it a slasher like, movie. This is what you go to these things right. for. Except for a few certain, well, that's very true, but, I mean, like, the 90s, 
I don't know. Just it's hard. It's hard not to just say, "Well, the '90s was the '90s." Mm-hmm. To like people should under <laughs> like when you tell that to people, though they they get it. They're like, right. "Oh yeah, we get it." So it's hard to kind of explain, like, kind of maybe the blandness of the '90s mm-hmm. that it was. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a good word for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Actually, that yeah, that's yeah. I, it. Feels like it a blandness mm-hmm. to some of this stuff. Yeah. I don't know what it was in the culture that we were kind of just like overseeing that stuff. Like, we just it wasn't needed in the movies to get people to go see mm-hmm. it, I guess. I guess just seeing the young stars was good enough. I would say that people were going to see the people they liked. I guess so. They weren't really going to see the movie. They were going to see these stars that they enjoyed. Yeah. Well, that, and if you think about, like, the really big, you know, like, slasher franchises of the 80s, like, especially at Nightmare on Elm Street, that had, like, at this point in time, devolved into, like, a caricature of itself. They were at the point where Freddy's on MTV, and he's just cracking jokes all the time. He's not really a scary figure, and those movies aren't very gorgeous anymore you know like all those franchises are on the downswing too and like mm-hmm. they're just I hate those later mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street movies <laughs> where it's just you know it's not even scary and they're not even trying anymore you know yeah. Yeah. they're just there yeah well, they're just getting the most out of Freddy they can yeah. you know there's the, the also the thing I suppose if you you know if you downplay these you know the exploitation elements you open the door to like a wider audience right very true people true. wouldn't go see the other ones cuz like oh, i'm too they're too oogie for me mm-hmm. like these ones are basically like well it's going to be a you know thrill ride there's going to be some suspense and you know, maybe somebody's mm-hmm. going to jump out of a closet at some point and yeah. scare you. You but... can take your whole family and go get scared. And nobody's going to be offended. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, '90s was like mass appeal horror. Is what they're trying. Yeah, to go pretty for, much. It feels yeah, like. nothing that's going to offend anybody too much. What stands mm-hmm. out to you as like the best horror movies of the '90s? Just off the top of your head, I mean, what comes to Scream? I mean, the Scream and Scream Two, <laughs> yeah. Nightmare, and, uh, New Nightmare, which is like '94, so yeah. it's, it's earlier mm-hmm. '90s. Candyman. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, Candyman. Um, oh, what else was I thinking? I mean, things like and like Jake and like or something like that. But that's not uh, that's a little different. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the fact that these uh, sci-fi, less horror, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. And it comes in the wake of Scream, kind of the ensemble Very true. cast. Got of, that whole yeah. ensemble cast in there. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I mean, early '90s stuff like Child's Play Two was 1990, mm-hmm. but I don't. I still think that, that some, that's in the like, '80s yeah. era. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. really right. yeah. that doesn't feel '90s at well, all. Well, that's I guess why I was just asking was like you know I mean I know. You, know, you said that summer. there's a lot of yeah. movies that came out of that time, but if you know, you know, again, this is just based on the internet and talking, you know, with other like-minded people, mm. it seems like the '90s was a uh, deficient decade in, in horror cinema, and I wonder, you know, it's like, so what was good that came out of it? And we're going, well, Scream was probably like a big, you know, that was Scream, the- and I know what you did last summer are like King and Queen. They're what is the connective tissue yeah. there, Holly? Of Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer? Yeah. No. Oh, okay, wait. But, Hold on. I'm thinking about the cast of I Know What You Did Last Summer. So we got Sarah Michelle Wright. She's in that. Freddie uh-huh. Prince is in it as well. Uh-huh. Jennifer Love Hewitt in the first one? Yep. She, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> there is a connection here. Okay. Oh, Matthew Lillard was in She's All That with Freddie Prince Jr. There you go. I was just going to say they're both written by Kevin Williams. Oh, oh yeah, that too. Okay. Well, I was, I was going right. to say Nev Campbell and Jennifer Love Hewitt are both on Party of Five. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Williamson, I think, became, like at least from the studio end, because of the success of Scream, he was the guy, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. he was the because, guy. And then it was like, and he wrote Dawson's Creek. Well, we got to get that made because this is the guy. You know, whatever he touches is, uh, is gold. Mm-hmm. And he it's did true. at some point work on Halloween H2O. H2O, yeah. Right, like came up with the original story or something like that. Yeah, he's. I think there's. It a doesn't few show, beats, but there's a, there's a whole. <laughs> I think I've read his draft. A lot of stuff. There's a helicopter. No, and... I, don't, I don't think maybe he didn't write a whole script. No, he oh, did a treatment like an outline. Because yeah. there's a part where a helicopter, I think, decapitates Michael Myers. That sounds cool. It does sound. Yeah, cool. I watched that. that. Sound I remember cool. reading that specifically. So he had. Who's driving the helicopter? I don't know. Hopefully Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I want to see this we movie. Can, <laughs> we can hope because it's going to happen. So maybe. Maybe Kevin Williams is like, you know what? I never got to do my helicopter Michael just Myers go, thing. Yeah, just go fucking full throttle. Yeah. Like it, Jamie Lee Curtis Rambo. Like, I'm in. Let's do it. I would love to watch a 2018 movie written by Kevin Williamson. I would love that. Uh, Let's do well, it. Remember, he did, the, he did spend several years on the Vampire Diaries, so that's... Oh, I'm not going to watch that, so... <laughs> yeah, no. no. no, no, no that no was his show, right? That was I his don't know. Show I'm runner. not watching that so. shit. <laughs> 
Um, so the other thing that Urban Legend kind of has that uh, helped me remember if the other ones do too, it uh, because it's a studio movie and because it has a horror, uh, you know, uh, pedigree, they're trying to, they populate it with some cameos. There's at least two, right? Brad Dorif shows up briefly mm-hmm. in the, the beginning. Movie. One and of my Robert favorite England. scenes of this movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I love that someone's in the backseat thing. where he's just Because obviously, I mean, you bring, if... I don't know if you're a horror person coming to this movie. You know who Brad Dorf is at this point, right? Right, Chucky. He's Chucky. Yep. Yeah, like people, he, they know he's the voice of Chucky at this yeah. point. So that gives a little added tension to the beginning of this movie because he's creepy. He stutters. He's you know he's just the weird dude mm-hmm. trying to get the girl to come into the fucking gas station and fucking kill her. And so that adds that tension to it, and all you know the reveal at the end that there's someone in the back seat and he's mm-hmm. just trying to help her. Like I love that when he just stands in the rain and screams at her mm-hmm. like that. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. A lot of characters screaming in the rain in these movies. I mean, yes. lots yeah. of rain. It is nonstop rain. It's fucking rain. New Hampshire. They don't have this much rain. <laughs> don't they? No. It's not the Pacific Northwest no. or anything where it rains every day. That's what it is in this movie, it's not though. Florida. Come on. It's not Florida. <laughs> they rain every 30 minutes in Florida. Oh, yeah. And Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger himself, stops by to play a part, actually, in a rare, like, actual okay. role. In a Hollywood it might as well role be a cameo. Of a fake fucking college class. True. Yeah. What the hell? This is on par with the an uh, urban legend class. American Psycho two. It's my, that's what I'm saying. This is when I was like, this is American Psycho two, but like <laughs> but more expensive. Class, which they do teach. Like <laughs> they, they do teach. teach it's those. a subsection of a of a. It's got to be. A they subsection teach of folklore. An course. Yeah, like within a course. It's right. not like so a whole is, course. My well, college well, is, is a course is, on just Game of Thrones. So there's all kinds of college. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> yes. And that is a state university. Yeah. That has it. Wow. So a but taxpayer funded higher, university. But this, higher is, learning. But this yes. is like yeah. this is the late 2000s, 2010s where it's like cool to do this. Yeah. You got to get those kids to pay attention somehow. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's going to pay attention to school. You got to get them to spend money. So make them sign up for these classes that won't count towards shit for their degree and get their money. But do you really want? Uh, Robert Englund to explain what subset of the course that this is part of his class. Yeah. Or do you just want to go? Do you? <laughs> or do you just want to go into it and be like, "All right, he teaches. This is part of the class." No, I want to know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna go with that. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd sit there and watch that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm probably. Not. <laughs> he, Colin's confused. Well, no, I'm just I'm thinking like the. So this whole movie is like the idea. Like I, I'm just trying to idea? think of the. Well, the I'm trying to reverse engineer like the writer's room or the the spark of inspiration. Oh, it was like, oh, you guys know urban like, legends, right? <laughs> right? That's it. That's what it started off with. It's like we can make it where they the killer kills people uh, in the vein of urban legends. He's using urban legends to kill people. That was the main high concept thought written on the whiteboard yeah. in their writer's and room. It's going to be the title. And everything came from there. Yeah. And, and it sticks to that for like the first two acts. Third yeah. act that falls apart really quickly, and I'm on board with the concept. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it's interesting. Great. It's yeah. great. I love it. But everyone's third heard act, those stories. Just... Everyone's heard those campfire stories. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, great. But the problem is, and I think the writers of this movie fell into the same thing: is like trying to give a killer a motivation. Exactly. To right. Exactly. Do these yeah. Yeah. That's because, like, well, that's why it's, huh. it kind of shows that that was the last part written yeah. in this. It's like, all right, why are they killing these people? And way? why is it, it felt with, very and why on. is it within the same circle of friends? Like, mm-hmm. what is happening? Did here? we ever get an answer to that? Because that was the thing I was sitting there going, like, but uh, okay, why so is we she are. Killing pro- them? Well, I was going to say before we say oh, who. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler warning: you you have been warned. We are going to talk about the uh, the end of this movie. Yeah. So you got three in the middle, in the beginning, two. One, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why is she killing all of these people in this uh, girl's uh, social circle? Because she's her boyfriend that much. Yeah. was she's, killed mm-hmm. in the in as an urban legend. So and she's saying, she, "I'm going to kill you and everyone you love." Yeah, she's hurting the people around legends. her. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's it's more of a scare tactic than anything, like killing all the people yeah, around her. You torture yeah. her by making right. her go crazy, exactly. and then you kill her. Exactly. Yeah. What the mob used to do. They don't yeah. go after you. They go after your family. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's effective. Damn there it. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that scare you if your family manager just start getting killed? You would lose your fucking mind. According to it, just seems very. Although I figured Colin would figure it out very quick because he's like, "Oh, this is like that one movie," and he named some obscure movie from 1972. Well, granted, yeah. I had seen this before, but there was a moment where it dawned, like motivation for the killer dawned on me, huh? like midway through it. I don't know. I don't I was like, uh, it's going to be this guy who was murdered, you know, this, uh, the, the lead girl, uh, Alicia Witt, mm-hmm. and her friend Natasha uh, Wagner. 
I think that's that uh, Robert oh. Wagner's kid. Oh yeah, they pretend to do the urban legend uh, the of gang the gang, high beam, yeah, the high the gang, beam, high beam thing, and run this guy off the road. Mm-hmm. It turns out that that guy was the boyfriend of Rebecca Gayhart's character, and so she goes after all everybody. Alicia Witt knows yeah. she transfers to the school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> implants herself in a friendship with her. It's a, she's playing the long con here. She's long, long con. con. It's yeah. that much sweeter if she can get into her life and then fuck it up. So I thought I had the character motivation figured out like halfway through and if it was what I thought it was going to be I was going to be like fuck this movie. What would you think because, it was going to be? Okay so I had seen this movie before remembered nothing of it basically. Mm-hmm. I was like I know Thanks Jared Leto's and then Robert England are in and that's all I remember. Um but I thought it was going to be Jared Leto wants his fucking student Pulitzer so bad. He's doing the whole thing himself to write a story about it. And I was that's, like, that's American Psycho 2. We watched I, this movie. Like, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, if that's yeah. the twist, I fuck this movie. Like, Because yeah. we've already seen this in a worse version weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, making fun of him about him winning his student Pulitzer throughout this movie. And it the student me, Pulitzer. Student Pulitzer. Not it a thing. Me of my, Not a thing. My Leto story. Yes. yes. Tell your little story. Because it kind of makes him see, making himself seem all high and important and everything. Well, when I was uh, like eight years ago, I used to live in LA. And so my post production company did the uh, music video for Kings and Queens for nice. 30 Seconds to Mars. Yeah. So he was hanging out there for like two weeks all over the place. And I think somebody, uh, because the production was going on for so long, uh-huh. and they sh- uh, just they shot on so many different formats. Like two weeks um, for a music video? There's a lot of people in that music video. There is. And they had like 15 different people shooting footage for this music video on like 10 different formats, oh, God. which wow. I don't know if anybody knows anything about editing, but that's... Back then, <laughs> lots and lots that was of a fucking log, nightmare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was... Uh, logging that was converting footage it was a fucking nightmare and so money was like trying to get Jared Leto to cough up money to finish this thing Mm. was a process and his excuse was about not having the money to do it or not wanting to put forth the money to do it was he's like man you've seen the movies I make I make I make Art films, man. <laughs> like that was his. Shut the fuck well, but this is for it. Okay, so I met, I met him at a, at a meet and greet right around that same time. I met him right when that album came yeah. out. So at that point in time, like he'd already done Requiem for a Dream. He'd done uh, yeah. some like big movie, like bigger movies. Exactly. It was not yeah. art films. That's, that's bullshit. Why, that's yeah. why everyone's yeah. calling bullshit. Yeah. On it. yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe it when my producer told me that. I'm just like, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, all no. right. <laughs> Fine. What like, a fucking tool. Uh, like, <laughs> he was a tool. Like I don't know. I don't know what the dude's like now. He seems kind of like a tool right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that's just me. I'm sure he's a perfectly fine gentleman. I liked the song, but he was a fucking tool for that two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my last story. Yeah, no, that's... Selective memory. That's really it's not like this was, It's not like it was 1998 when you did this. It yeah, was like no. probably 2009, 2010 it's not like right? He was, it's yeah. not like he was writing as my so-called life money. No. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> he was at a pretty good height of popularity. Like, 30 Seconds of Mars was really big. They were big, point. yeah. So he had music and movie income at yeah. that point in time. He was plus whatever right. endorsements he was doing. You know, like films, man. <laughs> you, oh, my you did. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Fucking Jared Leto. Art films. Oh, man. Uh, gotta start somewhere, and he started on I'm always legend. gonna think yeah. of that. Uh, now. Was I this his that. first movie? No, man. no, no. Oh. Had, there was like How to Make an American Quilt was before this. Prefontaine oh, yeah, was before stuff. this, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah he yeah. did some stuff yeah. before this. Very true. Yeah. My So Called Life was before this, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 96, right? My So Called Life was like. And he was a serious in, regular yeah. on that, so. But, you know, big 90s horror movie. What was Michael Rosenbaum, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. Lex Luthor from Smallville, what was he doing before this? Being this awesome, a- I can only imagine. He is the most, <laughs> like, I mean, this is... I love Michael Rosenbaum. He's very over the top. He is, is he very not? over the top, but he's having fun. He well, looks yeah. like Paul, poor man's Paul Rudd. He does he kind like. of. <laughs> but is that his way as an actor of amusing yourself in a movie that you're like, I'm just going to go and... Enunciate everything like this, and my hands are moving all over. I think he got the the, uh, fun part in the movie. First of all, I'm pretty sure when he gets interrupted in that scene, he was just like doing coke on the DJ booth because the way he gets up and turns, like his character was supposed to be, because the way he gets up and turns around, maybe uh, looks like he just got done doing coke. And got up, and he was, like, high on it at that point. Also, on I would bet anything that that was cut from this movie. Also on this uh, video box we got here, it very much looks like they're trying to make him look like Ryan Phillippe. 
Right. Who? Oh, Who? Yeah. What is it? All right. The eyes are a little no. different. No. Oh, what's yeah. his face? Josh. Oh, oh, yeah. Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, yeah. it's very. very I know what you did last summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. yeah. It's the the poster with the shattered glass. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. our killer in this movie, like all serial killers, this is also a thing that you have to do in a, in a slasher movie. They have to have their get up, their look. They do. What do we go with in this? What striking image? Original new serial killer mask. McCready's coat from the thing. Yeah, basically. basically. Yeah, a big what, fucking parka with a big fur hood. Parka with a fur over it that comes so far over the front that it would obscure the face. How does yeah. the killer see what the fuck they're doing with that? I like, know, with this that doesn't hood. seem like a smart Also, yeah. also just idea. slacks and dress shoes. Yeah. Yep. I don't know why. So it's androgynous, so we can't tell if it's yes. male or female. It's mm-hmm. m- meant to look like it's a guy, mm-hmm. right? Right. I think also the killer in what is it, Sylvester Stallone slasher movie. Detox or ICU or whatever the it was a guy I think he had a fire axe I think he looks exactly the same as because <laughs> yeah. they, they all have that the hood with the big you know the I'm sorry edges. this sounds like a freak show movie yeah yeah it does it really does yeah. I, I, one, I, you had me at Stallone so. yeah it's very true Robert Patrick it actually Ooh. takes place in a snowy environment so it makes sense that your right. character is wearing a snow coat so is this movie supposed to. <laughs> they had the script is written around it, to. and it's supposed to, locations were supposed to be snowy locations, which is why the killer wears a coat and everything. Mm-hmm. But they dropped all of that because I think where they were going, they're just like, "There's no snow." And, but they kept the costume. <laughs> but we're going with yeah. We haven't seen this, so they have, I, don't, I, mean, that I feel like that should have been an easy fix. Like film in fucking like Vancouver in the winter just, and say say it's like University of Alaska or something. Just don't make you it, know, it or, like, or just don't make it a snow coat. Or make don't it make something it else, you know? Like, don't make it a, like it's a, raining a bunch. Make it a, a fucking raincoat. Or make, make it, it a slicker. Make yeah. it a fucking well, you slicker. You can do that. I know what you did. Oh, yeah. Or you can make it a true. fencing that's costume. That, there you go. Dun, that's dun, fancy. Uh, okay. yeah. We'll save that for the sequel. Uh, Table that. We will. We'll come back to that. Like, <laughs> I, I just, like, all I could think of was was noticing all these, like, sunny, uh, like, exteriors where people are literally, like, playing frisbee yeah. on the quad and eating outside. I saw people sweating in the Yeah. But, like, and then it's, like, okay, when you work in retail, one of the things they, like, train you on if people are like stealing from your store is like if someone comes in like a really big fluffy jacket when it's not cold outside they're yeah. probably going to shove a bunch of stuff in that coat well, so like my brain I'm like oh something's up with that fucking person because yeah. like that's not normal so yeah. I'm like you would stick out like a sore fucking thumb wearing a parka like that when it's sunny and warm outside yeah. It was supposed to be October, wasn't yeah, it? It was supposed, supposed to be Halloween. Be so maybe it was session, like finicky so. weather. Maybe sure. it's because I mean, we could nobody else is wearing that. coats no, though. Everybody else is in like no one. You know, I know, shorts, but, yeah. but just no jackets whatsoever. No, yeah. it's just shirts. Yeah, yeah. This I is know. also mm-hmm. the most popular coat apparently that is worn by uh, young Do you and old know males. About fashion on, uh, on this campus. This is just issued to you maybe you when you register to this college, they give it to you for free. Popular coat of the season. You know what though? I'm This is Pendleton. This is an Ivy League school. These are fashionable people. For, no, for real though. We're sitting here watching it. I'm like, fuck, I had this coat. I had a I had a black parka from Old Navy. And uh, like everyone had that coat. Yeah. Well, so okay, maybe it's like All a Black right. Friday deal at Old Navy. Yeah. Like, like, Five dollars yeah. for that 90s coat. Nineties child just told you what's up uh-huh. as okay. far as uh-huh. parka coats go. Yeah. Because this of course leads to many uh red herrings where like, of ooh, course. you have a coat. Oh my god, he's got a coat. And an axe. And an axe. I use that as prop in my folklore ca- classes. Like, what the fuck I'm are sure you he, talking about? I bet about? he brings that out and just slams that on a fucking desk. Yeah. Yeah. When when someone like Joshua Jackson is back sassing him, yeah. he just comes up and fucking slams <laughs> yeah. the axe in the desk. <laughs> That's the professor I want. Yeah. It's like, oh, right. shit, I'm paying attention now. <laughs> I had a Fuck friend, yeah. for real. I had a friend. She had, like, a substitute. Just the- one? Yes, just one. <laughs> she had a substitute theater teacher for, like, a, a extended amount of time for, like, a few weeks. And he had, like, this fucking cane and a cast that he came in every day. And he was psycho. He would have Ooh. him do the weirdest shit. And then, all of a sudden, he just stopped showing up and apparently got arrested. They went... <laughs> They went into the back closet of this theater department to get a prop, and his cast and his cane were in the theater closet. Uh, like, for realsies. Yeah. Uh, for realsies. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So jealous That's of that. That's the best stuff. <laughs> right? It's right. like, ooh. Yeah. Like real life horror shit, except it wasn't horror. He was just nuts. That's still fun. <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. great. It's still good every stuff. day. Yeah. Every Why day. Can't anything like that. He's a theater to me? actor who's playing a part all yeah. oh, all the it. time. He's method. Yeah. yeah. He actually got arrested for a, for switching out a, a a fake blade for a real blade in a community theater project. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's method. So he was actually psycho. Yeah. 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 
All right, well, there was no scene that you're like, more real. I'm pretty, sure, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it was Shakespeare, too, which makes it even better. Oh, no. Yeah, makes yeah, it yeah, someone's yeah, definitely yeah. getting stabbed. Yeah. 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 Fucking Cassandra. I hope it was Caesar. I hope. <laughs> oh, Caesar. I hope or Macbeth. C- yeah. Yeah. I love that. The story. dude gets stabbed. He's like, at two fucking brute. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots the doctor. Of I make her tell me that story like every time I see her. <laughs> All right. So that, that wasn't an urban legend, though. You actually. Real. First real. Kid. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So real. This is how it starts, according to this movie. This is, you know, <laughs> it becomes a folklore. We tell these stories over and over again. You, listener, will tell that story. Except you'll say that it happened to you. Dun, dun, dun. Or someone you know. Or someone you know. <laughs> someone who knows someone you know. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, the most irritating uh, scene that I saw in this movie oh, is um, the scene where uh, it's there's a swimming pool. Uh, <laughs> is swimming. Now, we've all been in swimming pool, uh, you know, indoor pools where it's like. Let's just say yes. Humid, I don't know, Steamy. Like 86 yeah. to 90. It's balmy, degrees. usually. Yeah. It's balmy in there. And into the scene, because Alicia Witt is behind a pane of glass, as you always are in these type of movies, you're unable to help. Yeah, you're a voyeur of a, of a killing. There's a lot of happen. looking down into scenes in this movie. There's Someone's always on higher ground, literally like looking down. angles in this movie. Yeah. There's a lot of like crane shots and jib shots and whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's well, always like the very looking up or looking down shots yeah. in this movie. A lot yeah. of camera work, a lot of active camera work in this mm-hmm. movie. I liked it, but yeah, I appreciated it. Yeah, it gives a little little flavor. There to was it. a lot of like people would be downstairs, and the camera would be looking like over like the railing at them on yeah. the lower floor. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. was, I mean, I appreciate that in this movie. Like, there's some there's some shots in this movie that I just I keep playing back in my mind because I they they kind of live on for me. Like, there's when uh, Tara Reid is getting chased, and she ends up over the railing and hanging on to mm-hmm. the edge of mm-hmm. the steps, and it's the camera like. Craning up as the killer turns around with the axe, oh. like that mm-hmm. image is always stuck in my mind because it's just a cool thing. Because like I think the music fades out at that point, like the lightning hits and it just going up on the killer as he's holding the axe over the head. Mm-hmm. Like images like that have stuck with me from this movie. I think mm-hmm. there's some pretty good camera work in this. I agree dynamic. for sure. Yeah, I'll withhold. It. No, oh, say, fine, no. Colin. <laughs> uh, all right. So, but here's the thing. All right, so. Uh, in illustrating this scene where, a, uh, you know, someone walks into a uh, sauna, oh, basically, yes, yes, yes. wearing the full parka. Uh, little lesson in how you can tell who the killer is in your horror movie. Okay, kids? So anytime that, you know, because eventually the killer sequentially has to visit everyone that the hero knows. Mm-hmm. But there will be a scene where it seems like someone is being threatened, but then... It turns out that they weren't threatened at Guaranteed. all. Guaranteed. Yeah. This always happens. Guaranteed. Right? That's who your killer is. Without a doubt, every yeah. time you can take that to the bank. The faked out victim. The faked out yeah. victim. Yeah. Is, the fa- the is that what we're going to call it? The, the faked, faked out victim, out victim yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. What? It's Scream 3. Scott Foley ends up dead in a coffin. Like, he's your killer at the end. That's one of them. Right? Does anybody remember Scream 3? No. Nope. Nobody nope. fucking nope. remembers Scream 3. I'm no, I, yeah, no. I'm, I'm fucking bring that movie. I don't have enough room in my head for <laughs> all the bad movies. That that calm movie down. Calm time. down. I remember Scream 3. <laughs> no, I don't think you do. I do. Um, I remember. It's all in the movie set. It's all in the movie set. I, I remember. Yeah, the stab, I the stab no, movies. It's, yeah. it's in the basement of that producer's house. No, the whole movie is about the movie. I got it. Yeah. It's about yeah. the, stab, <laughs> the stab movies. Yeah. Then maybe back me up next time, Holly. So I'm sorry. Started. You freaked out. Because <laughs> so I was getting blank stares from everybody. And it's Scream 3. I, I think don't I remember. really love that well, movie. No. You guys we just it. pushed yeah. him Jesus. into bringing us now. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, you may have pushed yeah, me into bringing God 3. It. Damn it. Yeah. It's been uh, two years since I love Scream. Movie. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Right. It's fine. We had The Scream 2 episode's fun. It's a good episode. Yeah. Because Scream 2 is a decent movie. <laughs> it's a good movie, movie though. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Scream 3 is also a decent movie. Oh, <laughs> this is a man who brought Halloween three to the freak show. Yeah, who brought and Halloween, resurrection? <laughs> yeah, Halloween resurrection. Did I now, recommend now. either of those movies? <laughs> now, now, Did I, but that means you I wasn't here for s- Halloween three. I don't know. We <laughs> never, we never get anywhere with pointing fingers. I like to. That's very true. I like to discuss what's wrong with the horror genre. All right, why we go the places we go. Okay. Uh-huh. Imagine a better Scream 3. Okay, so, uh, all right, so what else do we have that's going on in this movie? Uh, toward the end, the, I mean, all that you, I mean, basically, yeah, you go down the list, you kill everybody who's, you know, uh, 
all the the extraneous characters until you're left with this movie gives you three people at the end because you have to have one of those is your killer. It's either Jared Leto, it's Rebecca Gayhart, or it's well, it can't be Alicia Witt. What else do we know her from? Alicia Witt. Because like everybody else yeah. in this movie is familiar but that's to me, the thing. and she is not. Well, that's I'm the like, thing. Have I seen like her whenever I see Alicia Witt, I know her from Urban Legend. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I don't know her for anything else. I know her yeah. from Urban Legend. So when I see her in other stuff, but how did we get to like? She the... was not really a very appealing uh, lead. No. She's not a good final girl. She's done it. She's, She's not. done some stuff that I've seen her in. She wears. She was in tops fucking Dune, well, Colin. She was in Dune. Uh, the TV one. <laughs> No, oh, your Dune. Right. She, she was, was in the, Dune. Little girl in she Dune. was the little girl in Dune. <laughs> right. She was in 88 Minutes. Oh, oh that movie. <laughs> <laughs> the real time movie. Oh, my God. But how did we get to just down to those three? What are the, I mean, let's, what are the We should hit legends? the urban legends that what, they executed. Say, what are the yeah. urban legends that we killed our people with? Like Joshua the, Jackson. Some, well, okay, I have a problem with. Of your car. Someone in the yeah. back seat, which is yeah. like, that's legitimate. That's legit. Okay, that's an urban legend. Have, and it, it's a good one to start with. We're all on board with it. I like yeah. That. Yeah. I have a problem with the Joshua Jackson. So one. do I. We, were, we had the same problem. Same problem. That, shouldn't it be the guy with it the hook hand? It should be the hook. It should be the hook hanging on the car. That's the urban legend. That's like the oldest urban legend. Love literally the old, like, at least in America. Legend. Yeah, it's the yeah. hook. Yeah. It's the, referencing the hook on the car door. Everyone know knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone and knows instead, that. he gets like strung up from a tree, like hung from a tree that's tied to the back bumper of the car, but like his toes can barely touch the car. It, yeah, it's a whole thing squeaking. that I don't it's, understand. It's supposed, squeaking should that should be the hook. Or yeah, the it's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like oh, it's tree branches. It turns out to be his feet hitting yeah. the top. Mm-hmm. It's, but like no. he's gonna die either way if he's hanging, right? So like, what's the point of this whole setup? Yeah, it just. I didn't like that. It's also a staple of 90s uh, horror movies. Probably more complex than they need to be. Yeah, that's true. A yeah. more convoluted than they need to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, because you're trying to, you know, obscure the, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's just make they, it complicated yeah. so they can't right. follow it. Exactly. Right. So nobody can know they what's going on. They think if they simplify it, they're going like to confuse the us. They, they won't confuse us. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Uh, well, because uh, the guy who wrote that, Raymond Chandler, said even he could figure out. Yeah. It. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right. So after that, you got what? Uh, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? The remain. The remain. That was an urban legend. Yeah. Aren't you glad you didn't turn? Yeah, on it's it's okay. it's, yeah. it's, I think it's, it's something called. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, I don't mm-hmm. think it's called the dead roommate, but I think I remember it being called the dead roommate. I don't mm-hmm. know why, mm-hmm. but that is a thing. Oh, but even but even before that, it was oh, sorry, my elbow just <laughs> straight up popped. Um, Did you break it? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. good. But even before that, the roommates on the computer asking him like, "Oh, where should we meet?" And he and she's like, "What's your room number?" And then she comes back to the computer and he's like, "Yours." That's like the inversion of the yeah. uh, babysitter on Basically, the phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's the internet version of that. Yeah. Oh, it is. Call is coming from inside These, the house. They were on the like the very edge of doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. The cutting edge. The cutting yeah, edge. The- That's what I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make the point if I can't think of the words. The yeah. cutting edge of doing this stuff. I was like, blinding edge, bleeding edge. God, fuck. Then there was the guy who was killed by the alligator in the sewer. Okay, you know what? Fuck happen. you, Colin. Yeah. All right. Sarcastic <laughs> Colin has made his way out into this podcast. There, there was. Um, that would have been good, though. <laughs> I'm like, why'd they leave that, that one? That would have been great if that just came out of nowhere and a uh, fucking yeah. alligator ate a dude. That would have been awesome. I would have embraced that level of, of absurdity in Toby. Too. Me too. I would have embraced yeah. that. Uh, there was hot, There was dog in the microwave. Which oh, was God. Unfair, which was seemed unnecessary. Unnecessary. Like, like. It seemed like just a, I don't just a way to what get the guy in the bathroom to pop rocks and coke him, like just, right. Just that's all it was, him, right? That's like a vindictive. Yeah, that's a vindictive move. But like that guy didn't have anything to do with the our like like the main characters, right? You know, like why did that guy get like, brutalized so have hard? To do with what you're doing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, that's my that's issue. A big yeah. question. Yes, <laughs> like why is she killing these people? Mm-hmm. Well, but we do get a pop rocks and coke. Version yeah. of yeah. it, yeah. It's pop rocks and uh, toilet cleaner or uh, yeah. liquid plumber, basically. Yeah, Ugh. which will kill anybody. I don't think the pop rocks had much. <laughs> yeah, to do with that I was one. like, maybe, maybe just the liquid plumber. Yeah, yeah. That probably is the big one. Yeah, I would a lot guess. of lot of setup for these killers. I mean, the killer is taking an awful lot of time and effort to make these things happen, mm-hmm. so they can be checking off. But mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Uh, Tara Reed. Tara Reid is just the... No, she's see, not the, one. Yeah, That's this the is, problem. It's not an urban legend. This is where it starts... They start to get lazy. This is the third act no, and they drop off. Yeah. I don't know. It feels like... Is there anything that he has loses to do with the like, people... Um, 
thinking it's a performance, but it's actually someone being killed. I mean, they mention it in the song that precedes that scene in, uh, ro- what is it, Roller Coaster of Love by the B-52s? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like how there's an actual human scream on there, mm-hmm. and they lifted it from a 911 tape and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, like, the kill- if you like the killer is not thinking that. Like, right. that's, no, that's, that's not, not the killer. The that's motivation, a completely yeah. separate thing. It's not a motivation for mm-hmm. it. I always think there is something about, like, somebody getting killed Live, but yeah. people thinking it's a performance, mm-hmm. like it should be an urban legend, but yeah. there's like no one to pin it down to. Yeah. But so much of that chase happened outside of the like recording but she studio. Had her, she had her thing. Up. Oh, gotcha. Okay, she had her right. yeah. Yep. So I, 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 I agree with you. I it feel like there is a story that I've heard right. something, but, but it doesn't pin it down to anything specific. No. That's a very vague one. It's but too, they didn't sell legend, it enough. I suppose, right? If it's that vague, then it could be anywhere. But we didn't well, get any character. But like, we didn't get a like with all the other urban legends. We got a lot of like character setup being like, did you like you ever well, hear this story? Blah blah blah. Like there was barely any of that for yeah. that specific legend. There was and just that. There was yeah. just that song moment. But yeah. you know, there's also the producer yeah. who just died. Yeah. The producer, yeah. That producer yeah. just died. Yeah. Well, there was also his, that open shirt fucking producer, just That's like right. 90s abs and necklace and shirt. He just I, died. This might have been when I stepped out of the room briefly, but then all of a sudden yeah, I came did. back and there was like piles of bodies. Michael Rosenbaum, I think, died when you left the room. Well, yeah. I think, yeah, but he happened on camera. Right. I and came back in terror. Terror Reed was But getting then him. Robert Englund was dead. But he dies the off screen. The old dude from yeah. the X Files was dead. Who's, oh, the yeah. Oh, you missed that? He gets run over by his car. That's who the dean. Oh, no, I did see yeah. that. The tire yeah. spikes. Right, which that's not an urban again, legend. Again, not an urban that's, legend. It's like a variation. It's a variation on someone in the back seat. It's actually someone under your car. And I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not saying this makes sense. I'm saying this. I think is what the filmmakers okay. were trying to get away with. Right. I agree with you. I think that's you, what yeah. they're trying to You're do. You're trying to fill in the blanks. Right. For I'm trying I get to you. think how they think and like what they were trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Not that it's yeah. good or makes the, sense, yeah. but yeah, the person under the car. I think you're right. That's yeah. yeah. But I mean, even to this, we're yeah. saying that the graft of urban legends onto serial killing yes. is does not completely take. Right? No. It starts it, it, off it, good and it, then it just right. falls apart. I, I think it could. It's just not executed properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of potential in make in like actually doing these things, but yeah. they don't. They, they, I, they try and make their own variations of these things that don't work. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if you stuck to a killer who was actually trying to do these urban legends to fuck with the people would work better. Like if you did the hook in the car thing, like even yeah. if you weren't, didn't kill someone, like if you just killed the boyfriend at that point and left the hook in the car, just to fuck with the girl. Like mm-hmm. if you did that, that's better than, you know, doing the variation they did in this movie. Like yeah. That's a better way to go. Like if you're, it's all about trying to fuck with someone. Yeah. Okay. I think. And that brings up another, another, like just getting really into the weeds on this movie, but Ooh, weeds, I like <laughs> but so like <laughs> when, when Joshua Jackson is killed with the hanging mm-hmm. apparatus with the car and the camp campus police, cause no real cops <laughs> ever get involved with this. Just uh, campus police. Yeah. yeah. 911 is never <laughs> one, called. One campus cop. Really? It's right. one, one cop. Well, yeah. We one. Divine. So I'm yeah. okay with that. Um, she comes to the scene and like everything's gone basically. So like mm. we're to believe that the killer like, Took apart that whole scene yeah. and yeah, took him down. No First time. of all, we're yeah. to believe, and this is looking back on once the killer is revealed mm-hmm. that the killer beat up Joshua Jackson, was uh-huh. able to hang him from a tree. Yeah, and showed up with a big ass length of rope. Yeah, like, yeah. somehow they walked there. Yeah, mm-hmm. right to this location. Yeah, because they, they had knowing muscle. where they would be. Yeah, I would say yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't think you can't, too much about you can't, no, 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 you, can't, you, can't, you have to think about the moment as it happens, yeah. and then yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't go. Which is unfortunately, I think, where a lot of these type of horror movies live. It's like as long as it's, it's happening, a lot just of don't it, yes. think about it. Just <laughs> yeah, right. That's the thing. I think Scream covers like the backgrounds of those things, but every other movie was just like, well, uh, either they didn't want to put the work into it, didn't know how to put the work into it, mm-hmm. and we're just like, well, this would be cool if we just did yeah, this. It's more yeah. about the effect. Yes, the effect mm-hmm. is what's, like you know, don't think yeah. too much about it. Yeah, but I mean that begs the question: Can you watch these movies and not think too much about it? And enjoy them. Oh, for sure. I, think but, I mean, if you're into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if if it's if it is working on you and you're not thinking about it, then it's successful. I mean, there's there's like bigger, heavier hitters in the horror franchise that have worse continuity yeah. Yeah. and worse logic. Like, I mean, just from off the top, Jason takes Manhattan, tells us a boat comes from Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake, 
to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. The boat. boat, The boat. boat. And that's how Jason gets there. Lake. (laughs) Lake. Just, yeah, Lake. and that's the that's the setup for the entire movie. That boat movie. is like the fucking Loch Ness. Yeah, monster. exactly. It goes yeah. some underground fucking tunnel yep. and gets mm-hmm. to Manhattan yep. somehow. So I mean, it's not just, it's not it's a fucking it's a ship. Yeah, it's, it's not a, a boat. Big. It's a ship. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 it's yeah. got a fucking dance hall. Yeah, right. yeah. It's are there go are there any somewhere. are yeah. there any connecting rivers to Crystal Lake? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Besides Jason, like rides, I think the entire uh, yeah he part of the he voyage. hangs like barnacles Basically, on the boat. Yes. Yeah, Under- he's a barnacle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not till like halfway through that he yeah. jumps up onto the fucking yeah. Anchor. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those ones where you can't go back again. I did actually watch that recently. I did too. That's why it's stuck in like, my oh, brain. Yeah, oh, oh, I want oh. to. I haven't seen it in so long. It's not it's, very good. Yeah. I mean, I'm. A, I'm. He doesn't I've really take peace. Manhattan. No, <laughs> he I, no, I know yeah. he doesn't. <laughs> I've made my peace with that though. I can go yeah. back and I think it'd be like, all right. Yeah, like that just into, it just sounds so like he turns Jason into a takes, child at the end. Like yeah. it just sounds so like he like he takes in a show. Yeah, like yeah. he goes yeah, 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 yeah. he goes to dinner. He and, does like, go to the village. Square, so. Lot was really yeah, funny. Yeah, he's like, I mean, yeah. he scares some punks with their boomboxes mm-hmm. and everything. He's like, I had dinner the in the village. I done yeah. Caught a show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what he's is trying in, to intimidate people? He turns into a child at the end. I was just saying, what's, <laughs> it, what's in New York City sewer water that's turning like toxic everything? Yeah, but that's that we should be concerned that that's turning him back into. Your child. <laughs> I want a documentary on New York City sewer water. <laughs> like we got an expose. Yeah, we got another Flint situation on our hands. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I think it's worse if it's turning uh, dudes who've been dead since nineteen eighty something. I'm not actually sure that children. it does turn him into a child. That no, that's, may be that's Rennie's the character. Vision, yes, because yeah. Rennie has visions of uh, which those don't make sense. Right. Well, okay. no, there's a fucking <laughs> child Jason drowning outside the porthole. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. So but, nothing's but really he's actually could be out there. Yeah. Wow, I this mean, is maybe. a rabbit trail. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's yeah, a rabbit yeah, trail, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a fucking <laughs> weird movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my point was there are bigger <laughs> horror franchises that make just as ridiculous right. uh, logic. Well, yeah, yeah that this have one, yeah. just as many problems with their logic Very as this true. movie. Very yeah, so. true. All right, so we got those. We got... Uh, we went before that. Uh, are you? Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Mm-hmm. Which is the dead roommate thing. Oh yeah, because Daniel Harris is Daniel Harris is in this movie that shows her, up like her first. She's barely in it. It's Halloween uh, Five. What last Boy Scout marked for death? Her first big. I don't know. I, I, was she in those? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen the last Boy Scout. Wasn't she in that Disney movie Wish Upon a Star with Katherine Heigl? Was that her? No. They trade places. No. <laughs> they trade places. No, their sisters. Really? I, I think, think so. so. I don't know. I, I think so. I know that movie, but I don't know if that's her. I don't I think know it that is. one. But she's such a sour person in this. Like, Very what much. is this character? Like, we get it. Yeah, you're Depress- a goth. depressive goths. We yeah. get the gist. But by the way, if she was really taking lithium, she would have been much more subdued. <laughs> but she's only taking the lithium for fun, man. Like what she wants me to do. She's not do taking you, it all the time. She's just like recreational when you, when you, lithium. When you mm-hmm. take lithium, you are fucking numb to the world. I don't think she's taking it. Yeah. <laughs> she's clearly, she's it. not taking maybe it. Maybe she's maybe she's selling them. You know, like maybe. I could sell Adderall on college campus. Maybe, maybe. she's selling lithium. That's you know? very true. Uh, yeah, maybe, you know. say that's how she's paying the internet bill. Prescription <laughs> went to her, so she could be. Yeah, who yeah. Knows? well, she could be selling. <clears throat> oh, yeah. The conflict between her and our main girl would not exist <laughs> in 2017. It's a very 90s. Their conflict. conflict is the main girl wants to use the phone, and goth girl wants to use the internet. So yep. they fight Dear over who Lord. gets to use the line. Wait a minute, kids. That means that they were the old modem where you have the... It's called <laughs> dial-up. Yeah. yeah. Children, dial-up. like, back in the day, you couldn't use both at once. <laughs> yep. Back yeah. in the day, you used to use the internet. You could get a service that would tell you when someone was calling, yep. and it would show up on your TV. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. The 90s were fucking crazy. If, you're, <laughs> if your mom was talking to grandma, good, good you're luck. not getting online. <laughs> no, nope. You're not getting in that <laughs> chat room. Also, there was a thing that, like... <laughs> If you had two phones in the house and someone was on the phone and you picked up the other line, you could hear the conversation. You just got to cover the mouthpiece. So yep, you right. Oh, hit, there was yep. a mute button yeah. on phones back in the day. <laughs> yep, There's still yep. mute buttons on phones. Is there? Don't you have an office phone? These, on your I don't, cell phone. I try not these, to use it. These things should be on your office I'm phone. I'm a texter and an emailer. I don't talk on people on the phone. But That's, you have an office I'm phone. A, technically, I'm a, I'm a millennial. I don't talk to people on the phone. That's not a thing I do. Yeah. It's true. You just text everywhere. Okay, so that's so we got problem. that one. Oh, you're still... All right. Well, I mean, let's follow. Oh, no, we got to go through all the... It's called Urban Legend. But didn't, okay, but didn't we get them all? So no, how... But right. how the final, like, the killer is killed, that's not an urban legend either, right? Like, well, what, is falling there anything out, after... Isn't uh, there, like, a ghost of a bell tower kind of urban legend where they fall out of... 
No, not uh, at all. I think that's <laughs> right. That's preaching it. No, that's and besides the killer oh, she killed, she oh, shows they, up again in a shock. Yeah, there's and a fake out kill, a fake, but yeah. but like all the but things leading, of, all the things yeah. leading up to her death, none of them are urban legends though. No, no. They but can we get rid of it at that point? Can we just real quick touch on the fact that they did Bloody Mary wrong? They did it five times. It's not five, right? It's, it's three, three times, and, yeah. it's, and it's in, in a, a mirror. mirror. It's in yeah. a mirror. Yeah, they did it. I don't the know. The most what basic they were urban expecting. legend, and they did it wrong. Yeah, I know. They did it wrong. No, At don't. the beginning of the movie, too. Like, that's yeah. what they opened Like, you with. fucked up right. the hook. You fucked up Bloody Mary. Yeah. What movie is Maybe this? Maybe I just didn't want to make it seem like Candyman. But Candyman is five thing. times. But I think uh, well, we're. Right. Well, there's so that. that is Candyman. But I think we're, like, I mean, we're also looking on this as a, I think, smarter audience than they looked at it back in the day. Because you could just. I think back in the nineties, you could just put shit in a movie, and people were like, "Oh, you know, Jesus, just shit." You know, just stand in front of a boarded up window. But there was like no internet, like a savage. In the nineteen nineties, they all. had internet in this exi- movie. You no, know, it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> we saw people using the internet in this movie. So people couldn't like people couldn't like well, look up. Just sticking with it. <laughs> I'm just sticking with it. Yeah. Well, people couldn't look up like the shit to be like, mm, no, I think that's wrong. They're just like, oh, oh. I don't think people researched their shit as much as they did. Now it's called like, a library, Sean. Yeah. It's called I a know, library. Which they went to, and she conveniently found the uh, dictionary of urban legends. Dictionary of urban legends, which which is a real book, by the way. Oh, I'm sure it is. Like it's a real mm. book. Yeah, they, they clearly didn't didn't That's flip past cool. like letter D in that book for making this movie though, yeah. because they ran out of urban legends way too early in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we get uh, we get a little meta commentary in the f- one of the final scenes of this movie like uh, Jared Leto and uh, Alicia Witt are driving away from the scene because they just took off and <laughs> left <laughs> left Loretta Devine yeah. to just bleed to death. Yeah, well, well, they call, call the, the cops. Right. Oh, I'm sure uh, she's fine. Oh, they're on their way. They said she, they're on their way yeah. and Jared Leto's like probably pressure to the wound or anything. No. Nope. No, just not at all. Just let Wouldn't her bleed you? And then they're telling know. jokes to each other. They are. Like, like somebody, there's a woman like, dying been, they, back there. And they should have been traumatized by a friend trying <laughs> to kill them yeah. and killed all her friends. But they're just like, nah, this will be a legend religion someday. It's like, well, <laughs> if this will be in a religion, where's the twist? And then Rebecca Gayhart shows back up. We were, we're, we've like gone full circle at this point. She's back in the back seat with the axe, mm-hmm. and then she gets launched out the fucking windshield into the river, and maybe supposedly disappears. And then we fade to another group of college kids telling you like, and that's how this happened. Like the story telling, of the movie. The story of the movie yeah. is an urban legend at that point. Mm, dum, and dum. who do we get again? Rebecca Gayhart going. Oh, I was going to guess, but you. Uh, well, you already know it, Colin. You watched the damn movie like ten minutes ago. Just like being a fucking know-it-all. That's yeah. not how it happened. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. No, you and can't tell the same goddamn an, story well, they just that in told. Itself is an urban legend. She's got the the scarf, the little thing tied mm-hmm. around her neck, which mm-hmm. is the as soon as that it comes untied, her head. Oh, falls the girl, off. the girl yeah. with the ribbon. The girl with yeah. the ribbon. I love that story. Right? Which guys? Yeah, exactly. I like that one too. <laughs> guys, this ending's a lot like American Psycho too. You? She she never dies. She just keeps coming back. What year was American Psycho two? Uh, two thousand two. Yeah, so, this so so it's ripping off. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. And there Sean's it like, is. Boom, so it's ripping the off the movie I did. Okay, all right, gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tell you what we actually thought about this movie. Whether mm-hmm. you should watch it or not, or whether we liked it or not, right? Yeah. Because we don't know right now. I mean, we're all sitting here. It could have been awesome. It's always we're all pretty. Cra- we're all pretty shit. jazzed up. Who knows? Yeah, I think Who so. knows? We're all, all pretty right. high energy right now, Colin. But first of all, we're going to get some to your email. Or your uh, comments. Get some to your email. <laughs> We're going to get two. We're going to yeah. get some to your email. <laughs> get some. Would you like another do? beer, Colin? <laughs> yes, I would, please. Actually, yeah. Uh, so we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Uh, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got some nice pleather pants on today for the decade. Oh, it's I mean, like he's just like dressing nineties today. I feel like he's, he's going like to be sweating a lot on, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's you got to, you know, cotton breeze, man. Leather yeah. doesn't. Yeah, do. yeah. At least he didn't wear his parka. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's no. smart. That's he, he, why. Even he knows it's, that's a stupid idea. Yeah, but yeah. it's just like his. You don't want to be able oh, to find the serial killer by sweating just, right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're going after the trail of sweat that they leave. Oh, little pools God, of sweat. leather. Don't ever wear leather. <laughs> uh, Joey Adams uh, has written. Oh, by the way, how can they get a hold of us on uh, Facebook? Facebook.com/slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Email. 
Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Joey Adams writes in on Facebook and says that uh, Rebecca Gayhart, which we neglected. In the, did we say that she was the Noxema girl? She, she was the Noxema girl. Which Noxima. they even make a joke about. Which they make the joke about, which is pretty fun. She was awesome. I like that. I appreciate yeah. it. She was also Dylan's wife on 90210 mm-hmm. that was murdered because Dylan. they thought it was Dylan. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I missed all of that. Oh yeah, uh, she was driving his car in the rain. They shot her because they thought it was him. That's that was like an exact uh, plot oh, on shit. Sons of Anarchy too. Oh shit! <laughs> that exact oh, yeah. same thing All happened in Sons like, of Anarchy. What's his name's dad getting blown up in the car, and then he shows up. Dylan's like, dad. Like, Dylan's dad. Gets yeah, blown up in the car he died a few times on that show. Yeah, I mean, that was that was, <laughs> but that did. was like the craziest thing ever. Oh yeah, watching that. when it happened. Oof. Yeah, Oof. poor Dylan. <laughs> well, Joey also says uh, Tara Reid had a decent chase scene, but other than that, yeah. it's a pretty forgettable movie. <gasps> Lots of movies. We're cashing in on the revival of the slasher flicks after Scream yes. was such a hit. It does have a few talented actors in it, though. Thank you for writing in, Jim. Thank you. Uh, also, if Jared about- Leto didn't suck, no, he's fine. No, he's doing his Jared mm-hmm. little thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's fine. But not an Academy Award winning performance. He was too. saving it, Colin. Yeah, <laughs> he just he makes art just... films, okay, Colin? He just <laughs> makes art films. I make art films, man. <laughs> I don't uh, have the money to finish this video. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew Carlson writes in and says that Urban Legend is where guy. he fell in love with Rebecca Gayhart between this and Train's Meet Virginia video. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that's too. <laughs> I love that song. That's the waitress, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Love's babies and surprises. <laughs> Where's high, high heels, heels when she, she exercises? exercises. <laughs> it's going to be a duet thing for her day, every, every week. Every episode now. Every week. It's bingo <laughs> square. Do about. Yeah. If you're playing bingo at home Saturday night, free show bingo. See, Sean bingo and Holly square. do a duet. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love square. it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> One day we're going to have to market this. Everybody mm-hmm. else, I have t shirts and mugs and stuff. Love we bingo. have Saturday Night Freak Show bingo. Mm-hmm. Uh, about our episode about the craft, the JB podcast writes in and says, Cool content. Keep it up. Hey, thanks. thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Very much. Awesome. Uh, the Dan Cody podcast writes oh, in shit. and says, uh, The craft is such a great film. I always find myself feeling sorry for the bully who starts losing her hair in the shower. Briefly, uh, briefly, briefly, be- you do. You're just like because she doesn't understand at first. She doesn't yeah. understand. Also, yeah. she like she's another she human being up, she suffering. Is, well, she comes up at the end. And she's like she's trying, mm-hmm. and I don't necessarily think you see that from characters in those right. movies from back then. Yeah, They're just like they get their comeuppance and then you don't see him again. She comes up and she's got her little wig on and everything. She's like, "How are you?" Yeah, and she's she's trying. She's she's learning her lesson in a really fucking hard way. Yeah, yeah. so I really hard that. way. Like, Plus, we only yeah. see one instance of her being really shitty. Like, we only get one example of her being a bully. It's not like a constant through line. Well, throughout I mean, the there's, there's, there's like a couple two. scenes. There's like there's, two. There's, yeah, but in like the dive, in the diving room and in the hallway, like there's yeah. a couple scenes. But, but still, like yeah, it's, but, but it's, it's not Rachel True's movie, so it's not like yeah, the, it's it's, it's a B story. It's at still, best, but it's more than we usually get. Let's say that. Yeah. So it's, I a, it's it. a high school girl learning a really hard lesson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? In high school, like so they don't learn that in the shower, right? But they don't learn that lesson until like years later. Mm-hmm. So to see her actually yeah. learning it in high school, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for writing in thank you. Uh, about our episode on Dawn of the Dead. David Williamson writes in and says uh, about the opening title sequence. I love it when a movie ramps you up to the absolute highest level of excitement and anticipation in the first three minutes. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting there when the music finished thinking, oh, wow, please let this continue to be amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. opening title sequence is fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. 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 We're saying that was, uh, More movies should do cold opens. You know, <laughs> movies are seem a little afraid to do that. Well, they don't maybe? do credit. It's at the beginning anymore. No, not you know, at it's all. Like, can't waste that time. They yeah. don't even do fucking logos, right? Like, you know, they still do uh, the Marvel logo. Marvel moved. does it. That was just sure. the weirdest thing when the logo happens. Like Marvel uh, does like a cold, cold open, open. With, their, with their logo. It depends on your budget. If yeah. you get a, a movie that has to have like five production companies on it because you're just yeah. trying to get money from wherever you can get it to yeah. make your movie, yeah. then they'll just start putting yeah. five logos at the beginning. So no that fucking credits. tiger jumps over something and becomes the logo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other shit. Ooh, that's Mandalay. I that know. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling for real experience. <laughs> Okay, so I guess that brings us to uh, the moment you've been waiting for all night. The I think so. Colin! <laughs> what did you think about Urban Legend? Um, this is, uh, I mean, I think actually Joey probably summed up my experience, my, my feelings on this, like, exactly. Uh, it does have some people who went on to do talented things, uh, you know, who were talented and went on to do good things. 
Except for Alicia Witt, who I'm sorry, did she drop off the face of the... <laughs> Poor I don't know. T- she did TV. <laughs> well, actually, TV. Poor Tara Reid. <laughs> yeah. yeah poor Tara. Okay, so talented. <laughs> oh, Tara Reed. Yeah. And she poor, made some poor choices. She did. Rebecca Gayhart did, too, apparently. Um, they... Uh, so, but I mean, it's a cast of people who are like, okay, they're, you know, interesting to watch. I don't even know. They're just kind of, it's like the interchangeable WB uh, horror film cast, you know, like uh, all these, it's just interesting to see them now that they're still working and, you know, what they've gone on to do. Um, it really does feel like a scream knockoff in style, in content, everything. Uh, but it's nowhere near as good as Scream, and it's like if you're going to go back to one of these movies, go back and watch Scream or 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 Scream Two. I would say is a pretty good uh, example. Yeah, or yeah. maybe or, then or like somewhere under there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, right. no, no. You skip over that, and you maybe go to. I have to uh, watch this again. So in my memory, I know what you did last summer is not bad. But yeah. Valentine, we're saying, is no. probably at the Valentine's bottom of the not the good. Pile. Yeah. yeah, I know, and I still know. Or Black Christmas does still that rank up there for me. Uh, yeah, I, like I know you did last summer. Still a fun movie. It's still a fun movie. I still know it's good. That's the one where they go to um, Brazil, right? That's the second one. That's right? the second. Yeah, the, yeah I still know. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But the first one I know is still and that pretty has fun. Herbert West Reanimator in it. I remember it Penny. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got Jeffrey Combs in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's still a good movie. Are we counting like? Uh, oops, sorry. Um, the remake of Prom Night does that fit in with this I, like well, era? The one with like uh, that's what's her way name later. That's later. later. That's two thousand. That's two thousand. Britney like Snow, isn't it? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's way later. But that's does also it, got. Uh, does it feel like a really late edition of this cycle or no? That's a no. Whole that's cycle. a different thing. No. Scout Taylor I mean, Compton's in that movie, isn't she? What's the one with Rumor Willis? Remember Ooh, and that's Carol Sorority Row. Sorority, Sorority Row. Row. Oh yeah. yeah. So they were saying that's a different. I era. saw that one in theater. Yeah, that's a different era. That's like this is more like disturbing behavior. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I like disturbing behavior more than I like this movie. Ah, there you go. Sue I need me. to watch disturbing behavior again. That's got like fun Katie Holmes and Nick Stahl in it, doesn't it? And, um, yeah, and uh, 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 oh, what's Bruce his name? Greenwood's in it, but who's the main? Uh, what's his name? Uh, from yeah, from I can't see his from face. Lost? Fucking hell! No, it's no, um. It's, what's, what's it? He he played fucking Cyclops in X Men. What's his name? Marsden, James Marsden. James Marsden. Marsden. Oh, yes. right. Yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I need to watch yeah. that again. Yeah. And Katie Holmes is. I remember a bus goes over the cliff and everybody razor. dies. And that's Razor. Like what? Oh Jesus! Like some I hate new when Teen Speak. I hate when they try and make up new Teen Speak. Yeah, Heather's mm-hmm. did it okay though. That's what they're all like. Oh, sure. Because mm. yeah, she's all that did that a lot. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Try, stop trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I was. I, I guess it, you know. Maybe what I was expecting from a slasher movie, I'm like, if you're going to go out and, you know, do one that's, uh, that has, that, I was going to say memorable moments. Those exploitation elements are the things that kind of make the movies memorable. And when you take them out, like, what are you left with? You're left with the bear. Then you have to pay attention to the plot. And this movie, you know, this is what we're saying. There's a deficit. Like, it doesn't bear up under scrutiny. It's like the motivations are cloudy. Why people are doing anything at any given time is like because they have to more than it would naturally, uh, you know, occur to them. Uh, because we're trying to desperately fit a slasher movie into the idea of someone, you know, the urban legend thing. Um, I'm trying to remember if I rem- if I like the sequel better or worse it's, do they save urban legends for the sequel i don't remember that one either you don't remember that one it's, i remember it's, that it's, yeah, did they come yeah. up with new urban legends that they yeah. didn't well, cover in this because it's at a school or it something is, it's too, a there's a guy school. in a fencing hart race. bachner yeah. is in that movie it's also got well, what's her name from house and stir of echoes i forgot her name uh, the blonde. Yeah. Uh, jennifer morrison yeah jennifer morrison's in it who's, who's in the urban people? legend three isn't she in urban legend 3? no she's not in urban legend three Jennifer Morrison is not in Urban Religion 3. You sure? No, because Kate Mara and Rooney Mara are in Urban Religion 3. Really? Huh. Yeah. That's... It's Rooney Mara's first wow. movie. Weird. Huh. By the way, do not ever watch Urban Legends 3. <laughs> that is a f- that is the fucking worst movie. Uh, yeah, directed- you, you watched it? Oh, yeah, I watched it. Because it was Urban Legends. Uh, because I like, I like Urban Legend 2. Final Cut. Urban Legends Final Cut is the full name of that movie. Um... So I thought, like, all right, l- let's go on to Urban Legend three, and it's it's Urban Legend Bloody Mary. Is she in that fucking movie? Yes, she is in that fucking movie. <laughs> Boom! I should have made it. Bet. I don't know. She's You're in just Urban Legend three. Oh, sorry, it's Urban Legend's Final Cut. 
That's the, the second, second one. Second one. You're dealing with like fan one of them. You're dealing with fan no, YouTube look. edits. Urban Legends Final Cut IMDb with Jennifer. They were Morrison. watching it on a TV okay. or something. She was not in that movie. All right. So anyway, to the I'll get out of this because Michaela wants to give her uh, she, <laughs> she does you know what she thought of Urban Legend. Uh, I would not recommend it. I guess that's uh, the final word. I think you can do you can get the exact same experience, but the heightened, better quality version. And there's mm-hmm. nothing in this one aside from you know eh, it's got you know Brad Dorif, Daniel Harris, and uh, and uh, uh, Robert Englund to you know like spice it up. Cameos can't save the movie. Uh, they can't save the movie, but that mm-hmm. might be a reason why somebody would watch it, a horror movie <laughs> fan. So uh, I would pass Urban Legend. Michaela, what did you think? Well, I think um, I think in general, 90s teen horror movies get shit on a lot more than they deserve. And I don't think they get the respect they deserve. I think they're very low-hanging fruit to say they're terrible, you know? Um, but I think they have their place, and I think they serve their purpose. And I think it's a moment in time we probably won't ever get back, so we should treasure it for what it is. Right, because they're not going <laughs> to yeah. make movies like this. No, never anymore. again. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, no. if you think about it now, like, what do teenagers now have that would be the analog to that? Like, they don't have anything, right? Because, like, I mean, I guess every once in a while you get, like, a happy death day or bef- a before I wake kind of thing. But but is it even, like, as exciting to them as the... It's as not the ensemble cast. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, not ensemble right, at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that combination. I mean, also because... <laughs> also because, like, there is so many, like... There, there may have been more a, a more concentrated cast of ingenues back in the 90s that you could pick from whereas now i think it's spread out so much Mm -hmm. there's so many shows and so many networks and everything yeah yeah for sure put people in like they're maybe not as recognizable as they were back then yeah if you're if if you were big on wb you were big Mm -hmm. but now it's like there's cw there's netflix there's amazon there's like all of these and if you were big on it like i can look at the cover of this movie and i'm just like i know i know all these people and I, I know where they've gone in their careers. Mm-hmm. Maybe Alicia Witt's a little more vague, but I know she's mm-hmm. done TV and I've seen mm-hmm. her in some other things. But I can pinpoint all these people and see where they came from mm-hmm. and where they've gone. But where are you with the cast of Riverdale? Oh, no. That's what you're well, saying, that's what I'm saying. Right? No idea. That show's actually pretty fucking well, then, good. Well, no, yeah, like that show's fine. actually But the idea that good. it's not a com... You know, like, like no, that, but the, no, right. because why would you buy stars when you can make them now? That's like that's kind of true. where media's at right now. They don't mm-hmm. pay for stars because they can just make them. Mm-hmm. And that's very much how Riverdale was cast. Mm-hmm. Like, those are all unknown people yeah. for the most part that were cast in that. You know, they spent their money on Riverdale with the adult actors. You know, Skeet Ulrich is in that. Uh, Matthew Fox is in that. You know, so they uh, spent Matthew, their Madsen money. Madsen Amick, is that right? Madsen Amick? I Alice know. Cooper. Are you saying words? What, he's in Riverdale? <laughs> it's a she. She's in Riverdale. She's, she's in Alice R- Cooper? I'd, is it the mom? You watch the show? Yeah, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that <laughs> What actress. are you talking yeah. about? Every, every, I don't know what you're talking okay, about. All right. No. Like, do, you, do you watch the show? Yeah, I do watch the show, but I don't, I'm not she familiar watches, with that so actress. Do you watch yeah. the show? Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure you do. No, but that's her character name. She says, okay, I follow her on social media. She was I think you're missing an element. I don't know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, the show, whatever, show's whatever good. Yeah, yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, they, these these movies are like a time capsule and they have their place. That being said, Urban Legend's not the best one, but like, I still found it enjoyable. I found the first two acts to be really enjoyable. Third act is really when it lost me, as we talked about with all our issues with it. But I could see this being like a good hangover movie. Like, I could see myself like, like a Sunday morning when I can't get out of bed and like this is on AMC just being like sure you know right. no. I, the, I, the, familiar, the familiarity of it is yeah. just like comforting yeah yeah and like you know just um, the, the most disappointing thing to this movie aside from all the plot details we pointed out is just like Alicia Witt is not a good final girl like mm-hmm. I think we got spoiled with how good Nev Campbell is as a final girl like oh, she yeah. set such a high There's fucking some, bar no one else can clear it you yeah. know There's some layers to her yeah and yeah. it continues you know like that was something she was able to do over decades you know mm-hmm. like it, we've talked about our issues off mic with Scream 4 but she's still Nev Campbell's still doing the best she possibly mm-hmm. can with mm-hmm. that um, but these characters are like grumpy or something they're more I don't know well, they're pretty she didn't have emotion. she has no personality yeah, Alicia Witt has no personality Alicia Witt's not the best no. leading she's like and that's if they would have just movie. recast that they would have done so much for this movie she's just like <laughs> people are dying yeah basically <laughs> like, yeah. like you guys kept comment on, commenting on her face her <laughs> face yeah. like yeah. You, had, you had problems with her face her face the entire movie. 
same face. I don't know what it is. It was like her mouth or something. I don't know. It, well, but, yeah. but that's, I mean, I think what turned you off is what made me watch her more because I'm just like, what? The, the, well, but I'm not saying it that was. That she had no emotion? What I'm saying, I'm not saying it helps the movie. I'm just saying it's like. Huh, she's doing that with her face. Like, it, <laughs> what, but that's doing what? what? You like, mean like, nothing? <laughs> she did nothing with her face. It's face. an interesting actorly choice to do right, nothing, to just do with, nothing your with your face. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. Uh, no, I think that would have helped this movie. Like a whole bunch just putting someone else in that role. Uh, I think like this movie has like a bunch of your favorite little like '90s things that never really happen anymore. Like we were talking about how like in the '90s, a sexy job to have while you were in college or in high school was to host a late night radio show, and like yeah. that's in this, you know, things like that yeah. you don't see anymore. Yeah, in sexy movies. late night radio yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Um, we talked about the. There's lots of interesting camera work in this movie, like peering over the stairs, down the stairs. I thought that was really good. I thought the editing was actually really well done in this mm. movie, specifically the scene. Uh, where that guy like finds his dog in the microwave and then like it's like almost strobe light editing through his death all in a matter of seconds like we get this whole narrative like, like cut a down to a matter scene. yeah mm-hmm. it's like a Jacob's Ladder type yeah. thing you know it's like um I mean in a matter of seconds we get like all this stuff happens to this guy so mm-hmm. quickly and I felt like if they had used that treatment more throughout the movie it would have made a better movie overall the one thing that like made me like physically shudder in this movie was nothing horror related it was fucking joshua jackson in the car no do, oh. no no doing his austin powers oh. impression i say impression like it's not an impression he's yeah, literally right, he's literally right. quoting the movie yeah. in the most lazy way and i get at that point in time that was still relevant but it just and that's what everybody did but you could that tell point. that like joshua jackson's like i don't want to do this you know like it just I didn't. It made me feel icky, and I didn't like it. <laughs> that's that's, that's what. See, in nineties horror, the horror never made you feel icky. No. It was the choices of the actors to do other things. Exactly. Yeah, no, don't do that. So I would re- recommend this as like a casual hangover watch. Um, but beyond that, it's probably you can probably skip it. But like as a ca- casual hangover watch, it's fun. Wait, so. is casual hangover watch before or under a movie to watch while folding laundry? Uh, I mean, this could be... It's about the same, I think. I mean, because when you're hungover... When you're hungover, you don't want to, like, think, because that's going to make you puke, you know? This is a folding laundry while watching the commentary on this movie. Ooh, that would be fun, actually. That's I would like to hear, this movie. I would like to hear their logic <laughs> behind some of this stuff. There is a commentary on this Blu-ray. Like, I need to hear some of these choices. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, that's the yeah. Where you're just like... Justify well, yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You explain your fucking self yeah, right exactly. now. Why, why you, even yeah. they can't explain the pool scene, Colin. I don't yeah. know that. They're just like... Serious? We, seriously. Yeah. They're just like... We had. Uh, we don't know. We just. Yeah. Did, we had to do something. Yeah. That's yeah. great. They, 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 had, they didn't know. They yeah. had no yeah. idea. They know the things that you know. They're just like we know it doesn't that entirely actually, make sense. That actually makes me more that happy. Helps yeah. them, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Holly. What do you think? Um. Yeah. My my icky scene, as you put it, was <laughs> was my the. Icky, can we all oh, please let's make that a segment yeah, on this show? My it. icky scene. My icky scene. Can we do my icky scene? My icky scene was definitely the casual. <laughs> the casual date rape yeah. that Joshua Jackson was imposing on our main character. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was oh that made she me. She punched angry. him in the face and he and still, he's still kept like, going. Are yeah, you like, sure? Like, like what the it's fuck? It's oh god, that whole scene. I was just like, thank God he's about to die. <laughs> um Yeah, I I agree that that there is there are some positives about this movie. The um some of the camera angles and the, the editing is good. I, I think that it definitely Gave it more of um more of an interesting aspect than I expected, um, but I agree that there is there is this element of of '90s nostalgia that we're we're just not getting nowadays, and it's it's something that I really I really love about these movies. However, this one I don't think can hold up to that nostalgia. Um, there's just such a high bar with Scream, and um, I know what you did last summer. Some of the actors in this, they, they bring back fond memories, but it's just not very good acting. Um, I mean, it's Tara Reid, you know? I it just it Maybe Tara Reid in her <laughs> best role. Like, she's... I mean, you're probably right about that. Doing, yeah, that's true. She's doing her best, and it's not bad. I, for yeah. real, I mean, let's just be honest. I hate the main character. That's it. That's I yeah. hate her. I, I think that she might sucks. be a big thing for everybody. I hate her. I think she, she sucks. Might not be the best main character. I like Jared Leto. Um, 
Joshua Jackson was a dick, but I still will always love 90s Joshua Jackson. It was entertaining, it at least. Yeah, you know? it's just how it is. Um, so there is, like, nostalgic elements of this movie that I'm like, there's just something about 90s movies that they're not replicating now that we're not going to get back that's really enjoyable to watch. However, there are better 90s slasher movies out there. Um, this Like what? Well, we did, I'm, we've talked about it for the past <laughs> an hour. Now. We've talked right, about it for no, over no, an hour. No, no, no. That's that's unfair of me to do. <laughs> we've talked about it for over an hour. We have. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't necessarily think that I could recommend Urban Legend. I think there are better ones that you could probably watch. I'm gonna have to pass. Sean. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said yeah. It's um, a great hangover movie. <laughs> uh, we. I mean. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, things have changed for me since we've started this uh, podcast. Like, uh, I think we, I went into this saying there was like, uh, it was a big period for horror movies in the '90s. Not a great period, but a big period. Maybe there weren't an abundance of horror movies in the '90s. I don't, I'm still trying to figure this out. I seriously is, think it's because there's a blurred line. Most of them were just like thrillers, not necessarily I think horror. So. Like I think there was a lot we, of you know we talked about skulls, disturbing behavior, of the faculty. Like they were just very. I think we named like almost ten movies though, which they came out probably within like five or six years of each other. That's a lot though. That is you a think lot. About yeah. It. True. You know? I don't know. I'm still like it's it's an area that I'm still exploring, mm-hmm. and yeah. I think um, yeah, maybe it's not the. Start over. Urban legend. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. I hope you're with me for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, all right. Horror movies in the 90s. Like, it was, again, it's not the best time for the 90s. Like, everything is obviously, like, up to a certain point. Like, uh, Scream came out in, what, 96, we said? Mm-hmm. And I think... Obviously, everything after that is trying to replicate Scream's success, what they yeah. did with their movies and everything, and this obviously comes after that, so it's trying to do that. So, I mean, looking at these movies, you have to see what they're trying to do and kind of, if you can, separate them from Scream. And I know this, Urban Legend is basically trying to do Scream with Urban Legends, as Scream did with horror movies. Yeah. And uh, the 90s is a hard, it's an hard... Uh, era for horror movies, but there are certain movies within that era that I find, and it may be full nostalgia, and I think that's fine if you enjoy it. Um, but Urban Legend is like it's a fun movie for me. Like I like seeing these actors that I recognize because you know we get Jerry Leto from you know a, a multitude of things at this point, whether it be music or other movies. Rebecca Gayhart, she was in you know Scream Two and everything. Joshua Jackson, obviously from you know Dawson's Creek and everything. Michael Rosenbaum, who sh- who has showed up in uh, you know Smallville and Cursed, which is another movie. Oh, we that's had, right. Mm-hmm. Don't forget he was in Cursed. It was a Kevin Williamson movie too. Exactly. Like so these people keep showing up, but uh, there's a nostalgia to the '90s, and I think that's a big thing with the '90s. Like the '90s, it has to be nostalgia because otherwise, why are you going back to the '90s? Like the '90s is like. Almost, awesome. con- it's almost, but it's almost concentrated <laughs> nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if you can say that for any uh, many other decades, but I don't know. The eighties is kind of that way yeah, too. I mean, yeah, Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very yeah, true. The eighties is very nostalgic. I guess I'm, I may feel that way more about the nineties than any one because mm-hmm. obviously I grew up in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this movie is. Uh, I think this movie is. It's fun to me. Like Alicia Witt is not the best leading lady in a horror movie. She is kind of, you know, bland, but then that's kind of like 90s horror, like I said earlier. It's kind of bland, but um, I like seeing these actors as these characters doing these things in this movie. Um, Obviously, I think it could be done better. I think Urban Legend, like, we could do a better movie now. Yeah. I really wish they would. Ooh, this should be rebooted. Yeah. I'd be all for that. I'd be down for a reboot. It's like movies like these that I think should be rebooted now. Like, they're taking the wrong movies and rebooting them for yeah. a new era. Like, do this movie and yeah. reboot it now. Um, but don't, I think, do, don't do good ones. Do no, ones better. No, do the better. fucking shitty yeah. ones. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Do that with Flatliners. Like, do though. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, do it. Sure. Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, Flatliners. It could go Flatliners, flatliners direction. Flatliners that's all I'm like, saying. good enough? Or just yeah. like, we... All right. We're yeah. good with that. But I think we could do this. We could do this better now. But I think what they did with this movie 
was entertaining enough for me because I like seeing these actors. And re- uh, looking at it now, I realize it's it's got to be all nostalgia for the nineties mm-hmm. at this point because this it, it is so of a certain time that I just like revisiting it. I like revisiting these actors who were like probably at their peak in the nineties because, uh, um, I mean, a great many of these people like aren't doing a whole lot nowadays, but they were at their peak back then, and I. I like seeing them on screen doing these things. Um, I like this movie. I think it's fun enough. It's got its problems, as we've all said throughout this, Um, which, you know, all right, however you feel about it. It's always, uh, at a certain point in the later 90s, they're always a lesser version of Scream. So you have to, like, realize that and then recognize what they do good Mm -hmm. and then just appreciate them for that. Yeah, and for sure. For sure. I, I think that's, after a certain era, that's what you have to do with these. And so I appreciate Urban Legend for what it does. Um, uh, I think it does it uh, good enough. I think it's entertaining enough for me. Um, I like this. I would recommend Urban Legend because I think it's fun to see these actors at this time. Can that be the new tagline? Urban Legend, it's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fine. I think, like... If these movies were existing living things and could talk and be like, I'll take that. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend this. Like, I enjoyed, uh, I mean, the second one, Urban Legends, Final Cut. Like, that was good enough as well. Like, they are they don't have to be of the 90s. Um, they're good enough if they're if they're good enough. You know what I mean? They don't have to be uh, groundbreaking. They don't have to be cornerstones of any genre. They just have to be good enough to be entertaining. And I think Urban Legend, like, kind of fits that mold. It's like, you know what? It's entertaining and I yeah, like. If you're entertained, like for the nineties, yeah. that was good. That was yeah. a, that was getting over a bar. Yeah, like that was high enough. We were just like, good for you. Yeah. So I recommend Urban Legend. I, it's a fun enough watch to go back and and see. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll definitely watch it again. I kind of want to check out Urban Legend's Final Cut now because I remember, I still remember liking that movie. And I haven't seen it in so long that I would want to watch that again. So watching this makes me want to watch those. Yeah, Yeah, that's been a long time. At least when it first came out for rental, I'm just like, I should watch that again. I've never seen Uh, it. I would recommend watching that one as well. Yeah. Part three should be burned at the stake. I would watch part two. I would. But I appreciate that you're like, I'm going down. I like Urban Legend. I'm going all the way. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go down it. Down the, yeah. Let's keep going. Mm hmm. Except for part three. <laughs> Fuck that movie. But you've seen it. That's I have point. seen yeah, That's a point. Committed. There was a point like, where I was I just like, like I'll see them all. I'm watch them all. Uh, spiders break out of a woman's face and crawl over. <gasps> like in the scary storybooks. That's the where, They I probably think, where just took scary from. stories like, to tell in the dark. I love those stories. books. I it love those it books. It doesn't work well in, in uh, the format of cinema. <laughs> 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 Which is giving too much credit well, to Urban it. Legends <laughs> Three. It cinema, cinema, yeah. cinema. Urban Legends Two, Final yeah. Cut. But I recommend, cinema. <laughs> I recommend Urban Legend. Uh, I mean, whether it's highly based on nostalgia, that's fine. I think that that's enough for a lot of people, and it's enough for me for this movie. So I recommend Urban Legend. All right, I got. Well, that's basically Urban Legend, listener. But I've got a couple so. questions here. Number one, as someone who grew up in the '90s, then is everything now so much more, uh, so much better? Movies now? Not everything. No, not there's. Just, it just feels like there's more options. Well, now. as far as maybe yeah. horror movies, horror movies no. generally better now, than, better they now the than they were in the nineties. This year, <laughs> this year things have been going. Pretty I would well. say we get <laughs> one to year. two good independent movies a year, but we don't get one to two good big. But budget I also movies think like anymore. I think like and good horror movies this year are can draw from elements of the nineties because like one of the most popular movies this year is. Happy Death Day thus far, or at least mm-hmm. as, as far as making money. But I, mm-hmm. I saw it. I enjoyed it. But it's also taking that, like, that slasher element is very prominent in mm-hmm. Happy Death Day, which was a big thing in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I think they're taking that and they're using it to uh, – they're combining a bunch of elements in that movie. But I think they're using it to their advantage and it's working for them. Mm-hmm. So I think I think we're, we're seeing those 90s elements in that movie and it's working for them. Like, the- I think people want those slasher elements. The thing is, th- I think uh, you know from what we've talked about off mic three three movies that we would agree. This, I mean, you've you just said what you thought about Happy Death Day. We the rest of us haven't seen it, but mm. um, most of the movies this horror movies this year that we all really enjoyed and thought really great were all Blumhouse movies. You know, uh, Split, Get Out, and Happy Death Day are all Blumhouse movies. So yeah, except for it, right? But you're just well, yeah, I'm saying it. like, yeah. but th- oh, that's that's the outlier. <clears throat> yeah. That's the only big yeah. budget horror movie this year we've all you know made an effort to even see. You yeah. know. Yeah. 
I'm glad yeah. you pinned it down to that. Not yeah. uh, that we all like. No, we made an effort to see. Like we, yeah. like yeah, yeah. we, we were talking <laughs> off mic earlier. We most of us couldn't even be bothered to go see like Annabelle Creation. You know what I'm saying? No. That's a big no. budget. That's a big budget. Well, Colin, you're, you're, yeah. you're different. Yeah, you're you're different. You are the exception <laughs> well, to the rule. Yeah. But like, as far as like box office, that movie was like crazy big. Like but, I, so, Happy it Death, was but Happy Death true. Day almost made the same amount its opening weekend as Blade Runner 2049 did. Mm. So I mean, Blumhouse is killing it this year. Uh, Horror's doing good. My mm-hmm. second question, Holly's like, well, we're never going to see this again. After we're done with the 80s retro wave. He'll never die. Is the 90s retro wave on the fu- uh, on the horizon? And how do you know? So are we going to see like a bunch of nostalgic 90s stuff within the I mean, I feel like we already missed the boat on it. I think there's a big bubble around the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I think it's impenetrable as far as like. Maybe revisiting things. I mean, we've we've gone back, and maybe I can't say that because we've gone back and revisited Scream, which was mm-hmm. obviously a '90s thing, yeah. but you know, reinvented mm-hmm. horror movies as it came to that point. Like we've gone back to that, but it feels like there's not a lot of elements. I mean, what elements of the '90s? I mean, I but as far as I was looking back at the eight, if they're horror, if the horror movies in the '90s, Scream and all that was right. self reflexive, or, or you know. About '80s movies and how do you be nostalgic? How do you be about- self-reflective of self-reflective? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, but, that but, but the thing but that maybe comes up in parody or like it comes up in something other than horror. I yeah, think. Yeah. The the thing is, like, I mean, if you're just looking at it from a mo- from a perspective of movies, like, I don't know. But we've already come back to to re- revisiting the '90s, like fashions that come back. Look oh, at all the concert. Oh, whatever. Look at, I love the '90s. Yeah, look at look yeah. at a, well, look at all the TV reboots that are happening. We've got Roseanne. We've got Will and Grace. Like it's coming yeah. back. But I like, think it's still, but it's happening parallel with the '80s. Have you noticed our culture cannot let go of '80s pop culture? Like as yeah. much as we try, cannot look at Stranger yeah. Things. We can't let go. And like pop culture because, is supposed to. '80s was the best because '80s was the best. But like pop yeah, culture is supposed that was to. On that direct TV thing, I was telling you. The survey of horror movies, like yeah. everybody said, the best horror movies came out in the 1980s. Yeah, like, but it's not just horror; it's everything. It, yeah. is. it will not go away. Like pop culture's nostalgia is supposed to lack 20 years. So by that logic, we should be knee deep in 90s stuff right now, and we're not. We're still stuck think, on 80s stuff. I think there's still. Uh, maybe <laughs> well, I think there's so much to draw from the 80s because we get we get so much from the 80s. Like there's mm-hmm. so much to draw from. Mm-hmm. Like that was a decade dense in But that's why I think we're dense in we, things that influenced our culture. Right. But that's why I think we missed the boat on 90s nostalgia being as permeable and being as you know, as everywhere as 80s culture is, yeah. because we're still stuck in 80s, I don't think we're ever, like, we, if it was going to happen, it would have happened already kind of yeah. thing. So I, I don't think it's going to happen I, to the degree it's happening for 80s. No, I, I don't I think, think so. I think we're just so submersed in, there, there's so much now. Like, we're just overwhelmed that we may not be able to pinpoint it. No. Like I think we keep getting more dense and dense yeah. as we go on. Like, we're revisiting everything at this point. Yeah. Like, we can't really pinpoint, like, oh, this is the ne- this is the revival of the 90s right now. Like, it's fucking everything. Everything is... We're, we're, we're past the point of specific revivals. We're just like, we can't think of any new shit. We're just going to make no. everything again. I don't again. think we get to the specific 90s revival. I don't think that happens. Yeah. Just, oh, I feel so cheated, though, because we got it for the 70s, we got it for the 80s, and now we're just going to skip right over the 90s. Because like, yeah. but think I think the it, '90s is I think like happening I think it, a little I think bit. It's, it continues to live in us. Like I don't, I don't feel like it does at all. No, I feel like the '90s are so self-contained, and it's you know. But then yeah. maybe tying it back to what Sean said, or there's two things. Either that it's we're in the. It seems like there's a little bit because you're on the cusp of it. Eventually, mm-hmm. as filmmakers right. who grew up in that era mm-hmm. get jobs where they can actually like make the films, then right. it becomes like a flood. <clears throat> or it's because the decade was so uh, like I guess you were saying that it, it, it was the me decade or whatever. Even yeah. Like, mm-hmm. seven, well, but, yeah. <laughs> that it well, lacked, well, right. Yeah. It lacked its distinct identity, and so that's why it's like you can't because it was borrowing from all these other. I think so. That right. it's like how do you? Which is what's happening now. Right. Well, they're it's, borrowing well, from everything. Thing. I think it's either it, it borrowed from so many things and was its own thing that we can't like we can't pinpoint the '90s to like go back to it, or we're in the 2010s and we are just at the point 
where we're gonna get to the nineties. Yeah, in the twenty. Right. 20s. I think yeah. so. Like, I think we may get to the nineties now. I mean, like that may be where we go. Just to use like sitcoms as like a timeline. Like, so in the seventies we had Happy Days because that was the fifties, twenty 50s, years yeah. pre- previous. In the nineties we had that seventies show, which was twenty years previous. Mm-hmm. And now it's the twenty tens, and we have the Goldbergs, which is the nineteen eighties, which is thirty years previous. This is what I'm talking about. They skip right over the fucking nineties and just go right back to the eighties. I just want my nineties nostalgia to be treated the same way the 80s and 70s so you're, nostalgia So you're saying was. that 80s show was ahead of its time. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's why I got canned. Is that what we got? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just checking. That's why I got canceled. It was ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Couldn't my God. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for listening to this extended oh, episode so of uh, 90s Nostalgia. Oh, so much. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly! Yeah. What are we going to be watching? <laughs> Is it? Uh, next somebody told me. something? Is. Yep. Okay. Uh, next week, things are going to get slimy. We're watching Slither. All right. All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for that. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.